Alright, everyone shut the f*** up. Yeah. You're listening to Twarcast, the Wheel of Time Reread Podcast. And I mean by reread, I mean re re read podcast. I'll get better at that. Now covering Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, book one, The Eye of the World. With me as always, Jono. Jono. Hey, Jono. Hey, hey you man. Mean. Hey. Hey. And I'm Joe. And Tom is sometimes here too. But probably not tonight. <laughs> we'll see. I guess we'll see. He must hate this every time. I know. It's a Tuesday he's phone like, call at like, 6.30. He's like, I know it. I know it's coming. <clears throat> Should we give it three more rings? Or? You've reached Thomas. Yeah. Cunt. You've reached Thomas Cunt? Yeah. Did you change his name? Yeah. Huh. Cunt. Cunt. He's a big fan of the, uh, <laughs> the Gruber. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, what are you uh, reading, watching, playing, Jono? Uh, it's pretty much the exact same thing. I'm in the ne- next Witcher book after Baptism of Fire. I can't remember the name of the title. Uh, it's kind of weird that you read. You're reading a book that you don't even know what the title is. Well, it's just the it's next Witcher book five. This Tower of Swallows, which I believe is what I call my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Tower of Swallows. It's <laughs> good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, so watching, let's see, uh, Broadchurch. Um, oh, okay. I never watched it, but it looks, I mean, I love I love that dude. What's his name? David Tennant? Barty Crouch. Barty Crouch Jr. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can do every time he's on. I love that pause. The pause Junior. to Junior is yeah. the best. <laughs> I've got that. Let's talk more about Harry Potter. I've got that stamp, by the way, the same thing he does that's a, yeah. the world's worst gavel. That's like the most effeminate, like, uh, same one that Barty Crouch Sr. has. Just always, anyone comes into my Order. office at work. Yeah. So, names, names. Barty Crouch. <gasps> it's like he like purposely put, he did it for dramatic effect. That's the funniest part about it. Yeah, it's not what, not because he's an actor, but the <laughs> actor. The, the character in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> which makes sense when you're surrounded by spikes and metal. Yeah. You got time for that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna make them all think I meant actual Barty Crouch. Just kidding, Jim, the son. <laughs> Holy shit! Hello, father. <laughs> just. But yeah, so he's actually entertaining in that. Uh, entertaining. He's in the, basically he's entertaining in everything he does. But he's not at all. He's a uh, Scrooge McDuck. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Is he? Yeah, he's Scrooge. He's Scrooge McDuck in the new Ducktales. Oh God damn! It. I forgot they remade it. I was like, in the ones from the like- new ones are pretty good. I have to say, as a cartoon watcher at the age of thirty nine, <laughs> pretty good show. <laughs> kind of enjoy it. So- um. What else? <laughs> but it, we watched Hemlock Grove. Yeah, I haven't watched any of that either. You don't need to. Okay, I wasn't planning on it. The first pretty season was actually pretty interesting, and then like we were just kind of like, what the fuck happens after this? I enjoyed the first episode. It started off with some nudity. Uh, and it was kind of intriguing. It gradually got like worse, then better, then worse, worse, then better, then worse, worse. Does worse. every show just need to start with nudity? Yeah, I Is love. We have time gonna fail because yeah. Yeah. they're not gonna start with nudity. That's correct. <sighs> Damn it. Yeah. What about when they get to Barrelon and they all take a bath, but none of the girls are there? Do you think they'll be naked? Oh yeah, you're gonna see some big old land. Well, sorry, small land dick. <laughs> Why is it small? She's Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted you to say it out loud. Yeah. Make it worse. Again, why don't we have more fans? 
That'll get all, that'll get all the people in. <laughs> you know, they're kind of marketing it towards women, so maybe they will. Yeah, maybe they will. What if we see Matt Rand and Perrin and Tom Marilyn and Land naked in the second episode of the series? Bushy fucking eyebrow pubes <laughs> over Tom's dick. Yeah. Oh, he's got kind of like one of those like Perrin's mustache got the, sunglasses. Perrin's got com- the red rocket. <laughs> mustache glasses combo for Perrin or for Tom Marilyn's dick. He just takes that off. Oh. Perrin, you got a lipstick dick? <laughs> yeah, I'm part wolf, bro. You were an aftershave? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually how they know. Because we talk about it in this book. Like, this part yeah. of the book. Oh, yeah, that's how they know. Yeah. Bath time. Yeah. It's, like, it's weird. Perrin's yeah. eyes change colors. Really? I was looking at his dick. It's, <laughs> it's a different color. Entirely. It, it functions differently. It's strange. You went through a biological change. <laughs> <laughs> it's very bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be amazing if that's like parents like point of view. Bale's never had sex, so she just thinks that's what they all look like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. When parents jumping into the river here later on, it's just like I felt my lipstick retreat. <laughs> Your lipstick? They don't even have. I guess they might have lipstick in this world. I mean, they do talk about they paint, do. paints and makeup. Yeah, paints and makeup, same thing. Yeah, but it's not like in a stick format that. You t- twist the bottom and it extends. <laughs> so it works. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. I'm, yeah. assuming. <clears throat> I'm still uh, reading the Millennium Trilogy. I'm at the very end of The Girl Who Played With Fire. Ah. Oh. Basically, I'm done with it. I'm, I'm literally in the last chapter. Why don't you come but back? But it's pretty good. Yeah? I, I, You know, when Tom, a couple of, I don't know if it was this last episode or the one before it, but it was like, is that rereadable? And I was like, it's good. It's like mysteries are almost always rereadable to a certain extent. Because and you also, still I don't really of... remember it. I tore through those books the first time. I like shredded those. So I was like, I don't remember what happened. Like you know, like yeah. it's, that was you know seven, eight, nine years ago. I think. I don't know when I read them, but it was a long time ago. When were the, when did the <laughs> the writer die? No. When did the. Uh... The Daniel Craig movie. Yeah, the out? Daniel Craig movie come out. I think twenty eleven. That's, uh, that's probably. I think I read them before that, but tw- yeah, twenty eleven. Wow. It was around that time. Like it was, like that movie was coming out. Maybe when I was like finishing the last book, kind of thing. It was twenty eleven somehow. Huh. It was my first and last time. Yeah, correct about any type of movie <laughs> or book. So you know, it's been a it's been enough time where it's been I, a while. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been enough time where I don't really remember what happened. Do you say you reread books often? Yeah, all the time. <clears throat> Seems like a giant waste of your time. You could read other books. I know. I, sh- I probably should reread less books. <laughs> I do. I do sort of. I'm doing this one for a reason, though. It's because they... Do you feel like you re- They have new books out. Do you feel like you reread books <clears throat> often? Oh, well, uh, no. That's only The Wheel of Time. <laughs> and or Ender's Game, which I've read multiple times. Do you know who the editor of that was? Harriet McDougall. Do you know who the editor of the time was? Harriet McDougall. Do you know who the editor of Where's the Altai was? Harriet McDougall. Interesting. Um, is there a through line there? Have you had a wet dream about... Harriet McDougall. <laughs> <laughs> I watched... Uh, Harriet McDougall. Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, which was... Fine. But you know what else I watched, which is way more important? What's that? <laughs> Fucking Jojo Rabbit. You need to see that trick shot. It was fantastic. <laughs> First of all, I mean, recently, you're aware that we've bonded over our love of Taika Waititi and what we do with the shadows. Yes. This movie is... On par? Spectacularly, yes. <laughs> We're just yeah. going to turn this into what we do in the It's like a cast. Wes Anderson movie. like that. You know the Moonrise Kingdom movie where yeah. Wes Anderson has the little kids and they're in Boy Scouts and stuff? Yeah. It's like that, but it's the Hitler youth. <laughs> <laughs> and his imaginary friend is Adolf Hitler, played by Taika Waititi, which is even weirder and funnier. Yeah. <laughs> it's spectacular. But a little bit it's a fantastic movie. Is he's like half uh, Jewish and half like a... Like native, uh, isn't he just New Zealand? Okay. No, he's got some like Jewish like, like blood too, if I remember oh. correctly. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't, I don't, I've never, I haven't looked so at his background. 
apparently like, like people were like a little offended by his role. It's like, uh, you know, what? ultimately get out of, get out of free card here, half Jewish. Oh well, you know. Well, first of all, the way it's played, them if you watch the movie, you wouldn't be offended by it. Uh, you'd be you'd be surprised. I'm offended by everything. <laughs> anyway, he's hilarious. The little kids are actually pretty funny. And here's the important part that pertains to us, Chano, which is very specific. The new kid that's in the reboot of Home Alone is in that movie. <laughs> and he is adorably funny. I... It, it is made, Russian it, Jewish it, heritage. It actually made me kind of go like... I'll watch it. I, I can't wait for this new uh, Home Alone reboot, I guess, because that kid is really, really funny. I will tell you this. I read a long form it's article. not a main kid it's like this little fat kid with glasses but he's really funny they have a fat he kid? steals like the scene every time he's in a scene like he steals a scene they're gonna have a fat kid be Kevin McAllister yeah a little fat kid well I don't know if it's Kevin McAllister Mevin McAllister Kick Kamalister I don't know how to do it fuck it uh, <laughs> Mevin 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 Kick <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that'd be so funny if that was his name <laughs> let's call him Mevin Good name. Mevin McAllister. McAllister? No, McAllister. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You changed it. Yeah, it's too close. <laughs> too close to the original. Yeah. Yeah, you changed it a little bit more. But make sure it's KCK. Because otherwise, it's not really that good. Or KCC. <laughs> Don't want to be Patrick Rothfuss and have your title the be fucking KKK. crooks are Marion Harv. <laughs> <laughs> Did we make that joke before? No. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey? <laughs> Mary? <laughs> Mary? <laughs> well, Jeff like a chicken. <laughs> uh, anyway, that kid is in that movie, and it's... Re- First of all, the movie itself is really good. But also, the kid from Home Alone reboot is in that movie, and he's really funny. So it actually gives me pretty high hopes for the new movie. <laughs> That's all. That, that was kind of the point of bringing that up. I was going to mention this like, like really long article I didn't need to read about the cap... cap- uh, the actual actor, the actor, the actor uh, of uh, Macaulay Culkin, Macaulay Culkin, yeah, and how like he's like striving to be like a normal person and coming back to acting, acting slightly, yeah. But honestly, I don't know what to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> Mevin Cacalister, you're you're good. Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's let's talk about the new kid, Mevin. Mevin, Mevin Cacalister. <laughs> he's gonna end up killed by Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin murders this little boy. <laughs> Gonna be a fit. That would be really dark. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that is. That's fucked up. Good luck with your <laughs> sequel, kid. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I want. I, I mean, the new. I think it's coming out this Christmas. That's <laughs> kind of awesome. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's coming out this year. I want to know more, and yet at the same time, I'm very afraid Maybe it's of not. what they're going to do with this. It's because. I mean, hopefully they capture the spirit of the original, but make it different enough to where it's actually fun, which it seems like sort of what they're trying to do. Like it's it Chicago, it's in Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes place where his father, Gus, leaves him to go on the road as a musician. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Left my kid in a funeral home once. <laughs> Didn't talk for weeks. <laughs> he came around. <laughs> His advice is so fucking spectacular in that movie. God damn it. That's see, those are the kind of moments you you can't capture that. You can't recapture that. It's gone. <laughs> There's no John Candy to like fill some weird role where he gets paid less than the pizza guy <laughs> for like a day's work. You can't do that again. Or just thinking it's about all the weirdness that's involved in like just thinking as a father, like, let the kid at a funeral home for a day. You fine. It took a while for him to yeah. talk again. Just, I don't think that's fine. Yeah. I think that that's yeah. pretty much demonstratively not fine. <laughs> it's just absolutely not. Yeah. Also, I got a little bit of news. 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 Uh, the guy that's playing. Where is my brain, Logan? Oh yeah. Is in that show called Money Heist. Do you remember us talking about that? No. We talked. We mentioned Money Heist, and Tom made some joke about how many people were being cast from like thief movies or something like that because it was like the third op- of r- version of that in a row. We were like laughing about it. I don't remember when we were talking about that casting. We basically 
I was like, oh, this person was in this and this and this. And then we got to the next thing and we're like this, this and this and just kept going. But that by the time we got to Logan, it was like the third like money heist thief, actor. thief movie oh, okay. like okay. like we had gotten to, you know, kind of thing. No, not specifically money heist. <laughs> just in general, like Ocean's Eleven and this and this and money heist. And he's like, how many thief movies do these people watch? And you know, that kind of thing. Oh, it was an Italian job. Oh, One yeah. One of them was an Italian job. Anyway, um, I think Tom Mayer. I don't remember who was in my, uh, was in Italian job. But, uh... <laughs> Seth Green. Anyway, Money Heist is a Spanish television show, which might be okay for you, but for the people that don't know how to understand Espanol, Netflix put out Money Heist and it's dubbed in English, so you can watch it oh. and see Logan on Netflix right now if you want to see, like, how good of an actor he is. Is he a main character? I haven't watched any of it. Yeah, apparently he's one of the main characters. Okay. I haven't watched any of it. I just heard it was out, and I was like, oh, shit. Somebody just said, unrelated completely to the Wheel of Time. Someone I know said something like, hey, I watched the show Money Heist on Netflix. It's dubbed in English. It's really good. And I was like, (laughs) I just started laughing. They were like, what's wrong with you? I was like, nothing. Where do I start? (laughs) I mean, nothing. (laughs) But uh, apparently, if you want to, if you uh, don't feel like reading and you want to check out Logan, uh, go. Oh, I want to check out Logan. Yeah, you know, go uh, check out Logan on Netflix. Money Heist is on there. Well, for those of you expecting to talk about the Wheel of Time uh, book, too fucking bad. Let's talk about this amazing retweeted picture uh, that was. Uh, if unless you don't want. To. Oh no! Yeah, we can. Uh, let's talk about this amazing retweeted picture from day one, set one of uh, what looks to be Evans Field. We'll put a picture up, maybe, of it on our... Uh, so, everyone... So, all right. So, here's the thing. It has to be Evansfield. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no way it's not. I mean, that's like a... Like, people are kind of going like, well, maybe it's not Evansfield. Maybe it's a village or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, if it's day one of shooting... And I'm not saying that it's impossible to shoot in two different locations on a single day. That's certainly possible. It could certainly be... I mean, it's a movie set or a show, set, television show set, so like. Yeah, you can start wherever you know. You, you want. can yes, but the key being is that Rafe Jenkins a million years ago tweeted out like the first shot of the show is Pat and Fane stepping off the wagon and blah blah blah. He's amazing, if you recall. Yeah. So based on that information, and this information, which is this is day one of shooting, and it's showing a village and there's a wagon. I'm assuming that's Emmons Field, just based on Rafe Judkin's theoretical, if it's actual timeline. Also, just everything else. Uh, again, well, yeah, everything else is yeah. very indicative of the fact that it's probably Emmons Field. But however, I'm just saying it could be somewhere else, like everyone's saying. But like, just based on Rafe Judkin's Rafe Judkin's tweets, I would say probably Emmons Field. Just based on his tweet about Pat and Fane from a million years ago. I just think it looks awesome. I'm I think it looks great. I, there's, you know, the houses don't look, they're not 100% how I'd expect them, but they're... See, but again, that, that, kind, of, that kind of stuff can be yeah, tweaked absolutely. and I, it yeah, looks different I, in camera. I'm or not upset about it at all. Maybe like they the build a certain... tree on the green. <clears throat> I will say I'm not a fan of what are obvious train tracks going through the set. <laughs> that seems different from... Those are for the cameras. Oh... I actually just accidentally walked in into like some uh, like Wild West movie. <laughs> <laughs> they just used an old cowboy set because yeah. they couldn't. They don't have the money. <laughs> they had just waited for them to be finished one night in, or what, once upon a time in Hollywood. And they moved right into the next old like, yeah. fucking western. Yeah. that was a cool movie. Let's not talk about that. Um, Wait, did you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? I did. That's a good movie. It is. Let's talk about that. Why? It's a it's a really happy version of the story that was not really what happened. <laughs> Is that not what happened? <laughs> no. A random country star didn't come out with a fucking flamethrower, spoilers, and just torch someone in this pool? No. And there wasn't a really cool badass stunt guy that killed like three people in the With in his the dog? House. Yeah. yeah, with his dog. Yeah. 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 Didn't happen. It's very just happened the other way around. The yeah. pregnant woman got murdered. <laughs> Had it coming. <laughs> and all of her friends. Wait, I don't know why I just laughed after that. That's really horrible. I think I'm dealing. I'm dealing with the the reality of the situation and I'm trying to make it seem like I don't care. But really, it's very upsetting. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the scene in the? This is obviously again part of it. Uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Yeah. Like the guys like, uh, Ro- uh, uh, Sheriff Rodingham comes out and like, tells the. Like, I've got some really bad news. Robin is here and is like, that's awful news. Why would you tell me like that? Like, maybe if you tell me in like a better way. <laughs> and so he just starts laughing his ass off. Like, 
<laughs> we just got our ass kicked. Uh, he's I, coming here to I, kill you. I don't remember that scene, but it sounds hilarious. <laughs> it's like, and the king just, why don't you tell me that while laughing? What the fuck is wrong with you? I, uh, the point is the pregnant lady got, to, uh, got murdered. No, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I like I liked rewriting history to where it's happier. Kind of like what he did with uh, what Tarantino did with uh, you know murdering uh, Adolf Hitler and all those Nazis in the theater. <laughs> and Glorious Bastards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, did Hitler die in that scene? I, yeah, I think remember. that's right. Uh, I think he did. Just burned a whole fucking thing. <clears throat> Spoiler: yeah. Hitler did not die. Nor did a lot of his uh, upper Nazis. Upper Nazis. Upper, yeah. Upper echelon. What should I have said there? I don't know. Just I was gonna Nazis. say echelon, and I was like, "That's all right." It's, I, it's, I mean, it fits, but yeah. it's not what I'm trying to say. Higher ranking? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Um. Anyway, so spoiler warning about every Quentin Tarantino movie. It's about every Tarantino movie. Yeah. Including his most recent. <laughs> yeah. And also the Wheel of Time, which we will spoil the shit out of because. We've, we've read, read all the books, and we've read them times. again, and we've read them again, and we're going to talk about all of them again. So if you're a person that hasn't read The Great Hunt, and you're like, oh, they're only doing The Eye of the World, I'm okay here. <laughs> the answer is, no, you're not. <laughs> we're going to talk about everything. So this is our episode covering The Eye of the World, written by Robert Jordan, chapters 20 through 23, which seems like a small amount, but for us... I mean, for us, it is a small amount. Yeah, four chapters. It covers a good amount of stuff, but it's a decent amount of time to talk about it. Yeah. Chapter 20. Cue the Kansas music. Dust on the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. So you want to hear... If only he'd put it dust in the wind. (laughs) Do you want to do a chapter breakdown, or do you want me to just go straight to the rant I've got? Uh, No, let's do a chapter breakdown, and then you can rant. All right, you go. All right. There's a rant POV, which... uh, now is, has a reason to care. Yeah, this this episode actually matters. Whereas yeah. every other episode, we've been laughing about how similar it is to the Warrior of the Altai. <laughs> anyway, they're in Shadowloga. I wrote, <clears throat> they flee. Mashadar cuts them off. Rand says, "I'll find you." Trollocs and Mashadar are everywhere. They get separated. Rand finds Matt. Tom joins them. Perrin finds a Queen. Perrin runs off into the river. Loses his whores. <laughs> Swims across, he's cold. I wrote, actually, I wrote, Perrin Ibera is cold. <laughs> Dust jacket of the Eye of the World style. <laughs> <laughs> Ran Matt and Tom find Bell Toman's ship. They board, head down river. Um, that's it. I wrote Tom lies and tells a story, basically. That's the summation. Now let's talk about details. <laughs> I always wonder if we should make that a tighter narrative or just no. <laughs> a tighter narrative? How so? I wrote... Blah, 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 blah? Yeah. No, no, because we talk about it five seconds later, so we're going to go into all this detail now. I just want to hit like the high notes of the chapter and be like, this is what happens verbatim. <laughs> In the most bland way possible. <laughs> it's the bland way possible. And then, just, always like, and then just, should we clean now that up? let's talk about it. <laughs> no. Why well, don't write my notes, like, I know. legibly, you know, like, so well, like, I know. unless you... we're talking like we are now. How many times do I have to go back, like, hold yeah. on, let me <laughs> try to get my... My notes are literally those kind of words, but I just know what it means when I see it, so I start talking more, but, like, it's, you know, anyway. <laughs> so let's go with a rant. I have always been confused by the temperature of what's happening because we're supposed to be moving from winter into spring. We're actually supposed to be a few weeks into spring, obviously. We've had bell time, so things are growing. Uh, but in this case... It has been a really harsh winter. Yeah. yeah. There's, it's still cold. It should be like mid-spring. It should be kind of like early April. Right, but it's more like late winter. Yeah. <laughs> right? If you'd said late March, it'd been really funny because that's like a week difference. <laughs> uh, but it should be like probably like late April, really, like versus... What seems to be early March, maybe. So, like, winter's hung on, like, hung on an like, extra month or two, two months. Yeah. Things aren't growing. Like, that's why Rand and Tam took so long to get it in. To exactly. The, to the so, town, right? So, where I'm going here is, like, there's still pockets of snow. So, like, <clears throat> we still have to have some today, like, so evenings go into, like, a sub-32 type yeah, for sure. Temperature. Yeah. Uh, and the sun's kind of weak, so, like, we're not really busting 50 degrees or anything. 
but it also rains. Like, it's going to be starting to rain here when they're on, like, in a few days. Sure. That, like, that to me, it's going to come back over and over because, like, the first here is, like, the first sentence here is about icy wind coming in gusts, like, like that kind of thing. So I'm like, holy shit, it's a cold night. And yeah. it's very important because everyone gets, like, a weird fucking night out. Well, except for Rand and Matt and Tom, but... You mean they sleep outside? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty... Like, so, like, what we're, it's pretty horrifying uh, yeah. conditions. Especially what considering what happens to Perrin here. Yeah, Perrin... Well, I don't know. He did an okay job of finding, like, pseudo-shelter and, like... Well, we'll get to it, but it's just kind of, like... It's cold as shit. Like, you could honestly say it's still going into the 20s. Like, not just, like... Maybe. A, I don't know. I mean, there like... there still be snow? Like, we haven't had snow in a Yeah, least. sometimes when... Well, yeah, but... I mean, sometimes when snow is, like, piled up in certain areas, it takes forever to melt, even if... Or it mel- it's melting every day. It's just had been so high, so it takes a really long time. So you see that, but depending on how cold or warm it gets during the day. But then also, like, there are times when, like, snow is in a particularly shadowed area, like in like yeah. behind a tree or something, that well, lasts way on. longer than, like... True, very true. It would, and, and the days get, like... Even though the days are warm, and, like, the shadow never... Like, the area that's shadowed never gets sun, or blah, 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 and it never... 100% agree, it's, but it's plausible it's that they're It's warming okay. up here, presumably, <clears throat> but there's still no real growth. So where I'm going is it, sure, it yeah. clearly can't yeah. be too warm. Yeah. Anyway, it's just talk about the weather because that's <laughs> just, just what I do. Well, it's, it's one of the dark ones plan. Yeah. So. It's, pr- it's prong one of his three-pronged plan. <laughs> What's the other? What are the other two prongs? All right. Sorry. It's prong three. It's yeah. headaches, rape, weather. <laughs> That's his, those are his plan. That's his master plan. And the dark one. works pretty goddamn well. <laughs> I mean, just with those three. Yeah. I mean, when Sh- Shadar Haran is around later. Yeah, now you got yourself a designated <clears throat> rapist who gives headaches. Actually. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's all over the board. Yeah. I mean, that's two of the I mean, if that guy controlled the weather, we, it would have yeah. solidified what we had If he set. had that bowl of r- winds, game over. <laughs> Um, I like when they get split up in the city and Moraine's like, I'll find you. And this is one of those moments where you're just like, if you had, you know, at this point in time, after all that shit with the Trollocs, told them that their coins were how you would find them, yeah. they may have held out, held on to them a little bit harder. Yeah, I get that she's probably not expecting the a second, transaction in a moment. Sure, but, but at the same time, yeah, just I say, guess. Hey, don't drop your fucking pouch. I guess what I'm saying is her lack of communicating certain pieces of integral information to them yeah. is, it's like, she has no one to blame but herself, and it's all because of her eyes that I secrets and bullshit. And it pisses me off. It's a blue aja saying. <laughs> secrets and bullshit. It's a blue aja saying. Uh, by the way, I feel bad. We talked about it last time. I mean, it, I guess what I'm saying is we rip on Perrin and Rand and Matt a lot for, for not stupid sharing. country bumpkins, yeah. which they are. Yeah. But, like, and less so at Gwen, because she's kind of smart. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and Neve's fine, because she's got, like, four years on them, and she's not an idiot. But these kids are obviously making a mistake after a mistake, and yeah. even under your guidance. And you're about to split away from them. And, I'm, yeah, that's not the moment to be like, by the way, don't lose your coins, you know, kind of thing. Like, I get that. But maybe, maybe before... Well, here's a question. Why, again, and maybe I haven't done much astronomy lately. Uh, I get saying, hey, head to the North Star, or this, you know, Red Star, or Venus, or maybe it's a satellite from Dave. Like, uh, my mind went to, like, it has to be this low for it to be so useful for them to all follow. Because stars are, uh, you know, really goddamn far away. And for it to make that much of a distance, like... Like, oh, I clearly yeah. Guiding go. yourself by the stars on is like the open sea makes sense. Not in but a, what you're saying is like, yeah, yeah, a one mile grid. <laughs> yeah, so like it doesn't really. My first thought was like maybe it's a low lying satellite lot. that's just been wonderfully there. Like I mean, that's not really a thought. But that's it's just moonlight like glinting off the top of uh, the Tower of Genji. Oh, I like it. <laughs> oh, that's further to the south. I know, but I'm just kidding. But like, it's the laser tower again. Why not just like also. Hey, let's go east three fucking uh, yeah. streets. Like, what's our? I don't know. These kids are smart enough to. I mean, they grew up in the country. Like, it, they're smart enough to know east and west, north and south, right? Yes, they Can't are. Can't you just be like, it's east? 
Go east. <laughs> you well, know well, what I mean? Or whatever. Clearly Matt can't. And there's a fucking funny joke about how like Matt's like, well, it's got to be the right. And then Tom goes, well, there it is. Well, all he was doing is judging horse flesh with his father. <laughs> Just rubber. Rubber. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't like running around in the woods. Feel what a gelding's penis looks like. I mean, he was, but he was just catching badgers and shit. Like, he wasn't like, you know. Milking cows. You know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I don't know. What <laughs> What else did Matt do? Milk like, cows. I know Rand is like, oh yeah, he milked cows, yeah. Who do you think? Can we talk about He's a dairy time? farmer. He's not running around the woods. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. You're right, shit. Because that's all they had to do. There was really no other option. Yeah, but did they, like, guide... Did he have, like, a father that's like, and this is how you guide yourself by the stars? Well, you know, like, Matt's he, dad is almost as good at stalking as Rand's is later, and he's true. the best bowman. The best? Second best, besides, again, <laughs> Tanner. Well, by the way, is Tan the best because he's combining... He's like Rand, and he combines two rivers with outside knowledge, which is obviously what he wanted to do when he fought the Trolloc Wars? Yeah. Or is he the best because he was, like, the best before that? Trolloc Wars? What did I say? You said Trolloc Wars. Oh, what did I say? What was it? Oh, the White Cloak Wars. The Iowa Wars. Yeah. Wait, was he in the Iowa Wars? Well, he was in both. He was in the Iowa War and... My bad. Anyway, yeah. you know, not the Trolloc Wars. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's 2,000 years yeah, old. Yeah, he's 2,000 years old. Yeah. He's 1,000 years old. He's not 2,000 <laughs> years old. Uh, anyway, you know what I'm saying. Well, it's the Flame and the Void. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. But, I mean, he's... And obviously he's a Blade Master, but not... <laughs> Cheater. They kind of all... Doesn't rant... Doesn't... Abel Cawthon have the Flame of the Void? No. Really? Yeah. He never talks about it, I don't remember. No, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he does. Well, so they're going along, and they find a, they being everyone not Lan and Moraine, and they find a column of Trollocs, and they all scatter in multiple directions, which is, of course, very well done, Moraine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just nominate someone for a fucking leader. It just... Oh. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just be like, stay with Tom. Yes, yeah, stay with Tom Marilyn, whose wily as <laughs> shit has been, you know, in weirder situations. He's also not necessarily, they clearly don't trust him at this point. Even though Lan is sort of coming around, he initially didn't trust him at all. And it's only, like, later on in the last few chapters where Lan's like, all right, I kind of rejudging my snap judgment of you, but I'm still on the fence. So maybe she was hesitant to be like, Everyone follow Tom! Moraine should know who he is, because Blue, Blue and are used to actually being... I don't him. know. Do you... Would, yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It, it wasn't was, just in... Like, he played politics on a grand scale. So I he probably... The, he was court bar in Andor. This was during her yeah, life. Yeah, but do you, do you, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, how far... I feel like she's been pretty far removed from politics lately. Like, she's not a like stereotypical Blue Aja. She has a weirdly weird task... True. Weirdly specific task that has taken her all over the place, and she's not exactly like doing the normal Blue Aja thing of like, I have a goal, and here it is. Make sure Andor is the strongest nation, and like, blah, but blah, you know, like visiting and Blue Aja have like the best eyes and ears. Yeah, but again, like she's not getting any news. News. She's news, still. News, news. <laughs> she's, I, I'm going with devil's advocate. She should have fucking known at least something. I think. Especially considering... I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, she knows who the fucking queen is, sure. But, I mean, does she know the court bard? Like, really? What? Well, he was A, fucking the queen. B. Yeah, but that's, like, a rumor. That was true. Like, if it was, if this was Carrion, I'd be like, oh, yeah, she should know him. But, like, it's Andor. Does she really care that much? Has she been really paying attention that much? It was a decent amount of time ago. And for the last 20 years, she's basically been obsessed with finding the Dragon Reborn. Well, you could also say she should know for the simple fact that uh, Morgase has a claim towards the Andor throne uh, through her father, or through her... The father. The father, through uh, Peter McAllister. Um, Credit card? Yeah, no no problem. problem. But but through, uh, what's his name? Um, Terengale. Yeah. And so, who is a relative of hers? Yeah, but it can do you really pay attention to who's entertaining the queen in her court? I do. Come on, man. I don't, I'm just saying, like, it's it's believable. And obviously it's been X amount of time, a long time, since he's been in that position and has now just dropped off the face of the planet. It's been, it's and it's just been being a gleam in. Probably about 12 to 15 at least, years. Yeah. At least 12. Well, I would say a little bit more, but like... 12 to 14. Yeah, 12, we know yeah, Elaine's 12, 17 15. or so. And so... <laughs> True, fair enough. So she... Yeah, she, she had to at least be around yeah. long enough to 
dandle her, her on his knee, you know? <laughs> yeah, diddle her on his knee. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I said. What did I say? You said dandle. Daniel Lewin. That's what I said. <laughs> Daniel Lewin. That's, what, that's his family name. Wait, what's the Jesus. Guy? What's Daniel's name? Alcine? I don't know. That's <laughs> Will. What is Daniel's name? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> Alcar? No. Alcar. Alcar? Alcar. Yeah, Chino. He just, you know, just Daniel on his knee, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, I'm just saying it's it's plausible. Uh, yeah. But you're right. She should have been like, everyone follow Rand. Yeah, follow Even someone. if it was Rand or someone that doesn't yeah. make any sense, like, just, everyone stay with Rand. See ya. You know, kind of thing. So when the trogs happen, they all just go, well, follow Rand. I don't know why I'm supposed to do that. I I don't like him right now. He's he's very annoying. But yeah. But I guess they I'll follow him. don't follow Rand. Well, they don't know to, but you're right. I think the key, the point here is... Whether they trust Tom or not, they should have said follow Tom just to try to keep them all together because theoretically she could have found, found them very easily if yeah. they were all together. And therefore, a lot of these problems might not have happened. Or um, she could get them all coins, not just uh, three of them, but also give one to Tom, give one to... <laughs> <laughs> um, give one to Samir Draw. Old Twatcast episode. Uh-oh. Thoughts and dumb things we may have said. Um... Mashadar reminds John O of Ghostbusters 2 slime. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel that. Yeah. When they're dangling in there with Ray. Which, yeah. you know, at this point, 248 chapter or episodes in, I'm just like, well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but back then I was like, what a bizarre reference. <laughs> Which I was like, things change a decade I was like, later. Huh, that's hilarious that I look back on that and go, I responded to that very oddly. I should have just immediately been like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and we already kind of talked about this, but this chapter marks the first chapter of different point of views. Let's talk about Ghostbusters. And we too basically smart. said something along the lines of, "Oh, so this marks the part in the books where we begin spending time away from Rand, and then every chapter it's just like, what the fuck are we getting back to Rand? <laughs> like, you know, kind of thing." And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that still holds up. Yeah, that doesn't change up. at all. Yeah. I mean, I don't only want to read Rand's perspective no I love anymore. Matt I love Matt yeah. chapters I like a lot of the other chapters Forsaken chapters are some of my favorite but when we spend like an entire book barely reading anything from Rand that's what we're really referencing so you're talking about I book think. 10 and 3 it's a barely Rand <laughs> true three. but book 3 has enough cool shit going on book 10 literally attempts not to F- fair enough Yeah. maybe we don't need to go back into that yet but god damn it uh, still a great book so Rand finds Matt by almost killing him Tom joins them. And that's basically it for them. We, co- we cut to Perrin. Uh, well, you missed two things. One, uh, I think it's a great escape how they run through the fucking... Uh, like right. Oh, it's really fucking cool. That middle gap between the Mashadar tendrils. I also like how Rand almost cut Matt's head off. <laughs> that's a good point, too. <laughs> Matt just, doesn't even really respond. I think it's a troll like, no! Oh, shit! <laughs> Matt, other than just being kind of like out of breath, is not like, you almost killed me. Yeah. Not at all. Uh, but I love that the the Fade whips the Trollocs through Mashadar to see yeah. if it'll get to him. And then for and some that's reason. That's the Ghostbusters 2 slime. Yeah. Takes over. And then for some reason, he also tries to go through. Like, I get just sitting them as a sacrifice, but I always thought it was a really cool, visceral, like, when it grabs the fucking mirror draw. And I bet I said this last time too. Uh, when it grabs the mirror draw and like it makes that silent shriek that Rand even though he knows didn't make a sound he feels all over his body oh like, that's the horrifying death of the fucking mirror draw just shrieking and like, like hornets almost like at a sub fucking audible level yeah you can just feel it in your spine yeah like, <laughs> and it probably makes you like you know neck tingling like get the fuck out of here let's get out of here uh, and then, by the way, another amazing Gandalf reference when uh, Tom comes out of nowhere and says, fly, you fools. <laughs> he basically does. <laughs> and then he falls down and, and finds then the he, Balrog. Yeah, and then he finds the Balrog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they switch POV. Uh, yeah, Perrin finds a Gwyn, which yeah. is fine. I, I love that he's immediately as soon as you get into his head, you all of a sudden realize how different his character... Yeah, he's very different. I really like... Parents how perspective. well done it is to make you feel like you're in a different point of view. I think that's why because I, not that Matt and Rand are like the same because they're not, but like they're more similar. Yeah. 
and Perrin thinks very differently and very methodically and like he has a very specific like way he views the world and I can yeah. see as well as Nanive also which yeah. is who we jump into in the next chapter uh, yeah, but like <laughs> but you know it's just kind of it's almost like he picked and choose like he didn't pick a Gween you know he chose Perrin for like a reason because he's like oh Perrin th- I know how Perrin thinks he thinks like this it'll be yeah. really different point of view and therefore within the same chapter it'll make sense that it's not Rand thinking anymore how but yeah it's good it's well written fucking terrifying do you think it is to ride off a cliff in the middle of the night and land in a river pretty terrifying yeah I have to say I haven't pissed myself too often lately but I think I would make an exception here also you know you're you're. it's not like he's just like free balling on that horse you know like he's strapped in yeah I mean I know it's just your feet and stirrups and stuff but like you got all kinds of leather straps everywhere I mean yeah. you hit the water like that you could so easily get tangled if your horse doesn't swim and it just sinks like you could get real <laughs> fucked real fast yeah. you know like kind of thing like you know it's almost kind of amazing that he got his legs and arms free without I mean he says later I mean you don't know he the horse free. dies yeah. but like he says later like oh I really hope that horse got to the other side or whatever but like you know like or or to the short period but like it's just one of those things where you're like well you don't know if it did or not they just wash up to might not have white bridge at the same time <laughs> <laughs> random Matt get off the boat later and just <laughs> what was that a uh, dead horse in the water <laughs> or just earlier random Matt at the fucking failed element ship and there goes Perrin's horse just like oh what the ah, fuck shit. <laughs> it's parents' horse. <laughs> well, it wasn't Bella, so a queen's still alive. Ran out, not more people matter than a queen. <laughs> yeah, you're not fucking um, her anyway. <laughs> Read the fucking script. Yeah, didn't you listen to Men in the other chapter? Yeah. Um, a queen's worried about everybody else, and lands le- or and parents like, uh, oh, land and land and rain will help, help them. Don't worry about it. You're early. No, that's right there. No, he goes to sleep first, then it goes to Rand. Oh no, I'm. Oh yeah, I backtracked back to where he found a Gwen. Sorry, my bad. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. They flee more Trollocs, then he runs into the river, loses his horse, a spear almost hits him, he swims across, and then I wrote, Perrin Ibera is cold. Ah, yes. And then he seeks shelter, and then we're back to Ren and everybody. But before that, a Gwen's like, I'm worried about them. Again. That's all I was mentioning. Come on, continue. My fault. <clears throat> Can we talk about how cold it is? <laughs> it's very cold. Because <laughs> it. You know, that, that was where I was going with the driving that, point. Is that that weird? Is it weird? You just... All right, let's say it's 40 degrees. All right, that's cold, but it's not that bad. Like, that's a pretty standard... Yeah, but the water could be, like, icy as fuck. That's where I'm going. And then his plan is to just get the fuck up. He's already tossed a few clothes, which makes sense. Well, he doesn't have anything. And then you just go pass out in a fucking... You're going to shiver to death and die, man. I mean, he finds a small sheltered area with trees and then buries himself under uh, blankets and branches. He's fine. You gotta shiver yourself and die, man. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows you strip naked. Well, he was too scared to light a fire. I guess it's just fear. Also, well, he didn't have a boat. He didn't have a fire boat. He yeah, I know, but also it's the middle of the night. I mean, it's not. He wakes up at dawn. He's not like asleep for seventeen hours. You know, he's, he's probably. It's probably like. <laughs> So a few hours before dawn. I don't think he was there for that long, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Sure. He's still... I still think three hours of passing out cold. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably... You're going to wake up and be... Uh, I guess this is kind of the part where I'm saying <laughs> maybe he's not that cold. As you might think. <laughs> Is all I'm saying. I think hypothermia sets in. This whole thing. <laughs> You're right. He's fucked. He's fucked. You know, is it? Is it? Maybe it's his connection to the wolves. Now that their thoughts keep him warm. <laughs> thoughts you know? and prayers, man. It'd be fun. <laughs> you know, they're just like thinking of fire and sending it his way. <laughs> so anyway, ran Matt and Tom. I love like we talked about it briefly earlier. This weird insult on Matt, like Matt's like, "Well, we're looking north earlier, so it's got to be on our left." And like, Thomas goes, "It's to the right." And he's like, "God damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, the opposite direction. <laughs> well, that was gotcha. close. You should always listen to me. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, a uh, few trollocs come in. Yeah, you know what it's time for. One they find these. the boat first, right? No, they. There's two sets of trollocs that come. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. There's unfortunately Tom loses his second best set of knives when he kills. A oh, does he here. say second best? He does. Oh, I thought he said best set of knives. No, it's only second best. 
All right, well, that ruins what I was going to say later. Or at, right now. We went to this weird deep dive, and I don't even remember it, but, like, it's the Blue Sparks. The yeah. Knives thing. Oh, yeah. Of, like, maybe those are, like, Power Rod or something, and I'm just like, Power Rod knives, really? Like, Yeah, why not? I mean, it's possible. Yeah. Even to this day, it's like... It's I, definitely I still, It's yeah. not. Yeah. But, like, the Blue Sparks thing is weird. I mean, metal makes Blue Sparks. Anyway, we went to this weird... Maybe the knives are made of this. Maybe they're special knives. Maybe blah, blah, blah. They were made of Thakendor. And then in this reread, for some fucking reason, I heard, I, I thought he said best knives. And then I was like, well, if he lost his best fucking knives, then yeah. <laughs> surely the surely next ones are power run. You- and then I was like, oh, if he lost his second best set, then I guess that theory still theoretically could exist. Theoretically. Doesn't, but could <laughs> exist. Doesn't, but that's all right. Uh, all right, go on. So... They start going downriver. And thankfully, by the way, there's a motherfucking boat. About that. Yeah. Really wish we'd all, instead of going to the fucking Red Star, maybe we just change a little bit towards the south there in the morning. Or just, uh, you know, go to the riverbank and turn left. Right. Turn right. Yeah. Good job, Matt Coffin. You know what? Uh, you know what's funny about that? In my brain... Every single time, and it's this probably goes back to the very original time I read the book without referencing the map when I read it. Mistake in my brain, I think of them crossing like towards Eridomon and going in that direction, and in reality, it's completely opposite of that. Yeah, and like for some fucking reason, every time, even though I know it's wrong, like when I'm rereading the book, I still think of it going in that direction, so I'm all turned around, sort of. And it doesn't make any sense until I get to the Elias part where he's like, well, if you kept going this way, you'd hit the spot of the world. <laughs> you idiots, you'd miss Camelin by a hundred miles, you know, like kind of thing. Like, and I'm like, spot of the world? Oh, we're going east. Idiot. Other way. <laughs> Other way. Every time. And I, so every time I reread the books, I'm like, oh, they're going in this direction. They're walking. They're walking. They're walking. This is the direction they're moving in. And then I'm like, reverse. Reverse of that, Joe. Okay. And it takes Elias every single time to rewrite my brain. Isn't that ridiculous? A little bit. <laughs> I mean, maybe if I had it... It's not ridiculous if you've only read the book once. Yeah. It's ridiculous for me <laughs> to still <laughs> mix that up. I am Matt Coffin. <laughs> Shit. So, um, so it's time to kick Floor and Gelb in the face. Yeah. They Janice board the ship. It's pretty fucking hilarious. I didn't really write a whole lot here not other much. than... It's... It kicks Floor and Gelb in the face, channel some air, and... Uh, Thank God for Bale Doom, Bale Doom and Doobie Paranoid of Trollocs. Uh, because well, also, he's been having trouble with them. But not really. His, in, his immediate... Yeah, but his immediate assumption that they're not after them... Yeah. Saves the day. Yeah. It yeah. saves their lives. Or not their lives, per se, but just like... I also do like when Bale Doman's like, I said I'd let you off. I didn't say I'd let you off on shore. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> a dick. Bale Doman's kind of awesome here. He's actually... And also, he's still the same guy, like, way later in the series. Like... Yeah. I, I thought he changed, and he was like, I don't know, just, like, way more, like, meek and not, like, really the character that he was when we initially met him. But, like, the more... When I reread this last time, I was just like, Jesus, he's still, like kind of a hard ass slash asshole yeah for the whole books like no matter without, without fail except for again well I mean aside from yeah but that's what it becomes but like it's all, like yeah, we I will kill that. you yeah, yeah and that's way later but yeah. yeah but um yeah he he really does stay on character I guess is what I'm saying I want to talk about the fact that Matt was about to sit down on Doman's cum crusted bed yeah and I was like, I don't think so, dude. He's like, he just looks at him. Oh, okay. He's like half down. He's like, oh, all right. Yeah, you'll be stuck to that. All right, I'll stand up. Yeah. <laughs> you think that bed was that gross? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You kidding me? A few a week or two on a river, just a whole bunch of dudes. <laughs> I'm wetting my sheets he right share, now. He shares his bed every night with one somebody yeah. from on the de- from on the deck. I know you guys are rivermen, but you're semen to me. That's not even a funny joke. <laughs> that do be come. <laughs> I don't really have any response to this at all. <laughs> it's an interesting take. <laughs> it's, a, it's all I got, I think. It's, a, it's an interesting tenure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is definitely not in our first conversation over this. <laughs> It do become. How disgusting his bed is. <laughs> was not on our minds. 
Um, it was. Yeah, uh, so the Hedron River, Tom tells this elaborate story, and at the end of it... <laughs> I love the story. Bale, Bale Doman is kind of like, Jesus. that sounds fucking crazy. If I hadn't just seen Trollocs, I would have been like, you're full of shit, but I did, so... <laughs> it all sort of sounds real. <laughs> I love the juxtaposition between that and when Gwen tells that story later on. Yeah, the and they're just chapter. like, lies, liar. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And Parent mentally is like, wow, Tom Marilyn could not have done better. Meanwhile, yeah. Tom Marilyn just did a lot fucking better. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's also not, you know, fly smelling wolves <laughs> right next to him. <laughs> should, have, should have thought of that. <laughs> anyway, so they have to pay their coins. Uh oh. Yeah, and then Tom's like, You idiots! I could have gotten us down river for like a few stories and some juggling. <laughs> Is that I'm true? Like, nah, probably not with Bill Doman, I don't think. Yeah, and, and at least not entirely. Maybe if he had boarded a ship in a regular fashion at a port with a different sea captain or with a different boat captain maybe sure yeah absolutely but not in this situation with this guy I don't think that would have worked I think he would have been like that's great but uh, what money do you have should we talk about our long uh, and even at the end of it he does give them a lot of money back and goes hey you guys did earn your way blah 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 so like clearly he's reasonable yeah but initially, I don't think he would have been he like, does, yeah, like, like he said, he's the hard-ass person. Yeah, yeah. But should we talk about uh, <laughs> Florin Gelb? What about him? You know, it's funny. It's like on first read, I'm like, you know, he did just get kicked in the face. Oh, but he was sleeping. Uh, you know, does he deserve to be kind of... And then uh, the does he is, deserve to be yes, shit on? And does. the answer is yes, because he's obviously a piece of shit before this happens. And he's like, well, he hit me with a cudgel, sir. Uh, clearly trying to... Uh, you know, like yeah. take over the ship and all that sort of... It's just like... He also offers Beldum and ship up to them. <laughs> like, immediately. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, take the ship, take whatever you want, just leave me alive. Like he's, he's like, not, what? He's only and then a trawler comes on board and he's like... That's when he channels the boom and hits him. Yeah. Which, again, we'll talk about Which, the next chapter. Yeah. Is amazing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so he's 90% shit bag, 10% like, ah, oh, I kind of feel a little bad for you. It's a hell of a way to wake up. But also, you're not supposed to be asleep. <laughs> Yeah, he, he did secure the boom, so good for him for did not he? having... Yeah. That was oh, the, so Rand did, like, channel to break that. And, yeah. Because like, okay. there's, like, one that like, goes a look of genuine surprise when he was like, wait a minute, I may be dumb, but... I, I mean, I took my nap after I finished my work. I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. It. Damn it. Anyway, Rand's worried about everyone else. Tom says they're fine. And then Rand just kind of ends the chapter with thinking we should have done more, which... Because, I mean, he does try multiple times to convince Bell Doman to... Yeah, do he's like, our friends will pay more money. Just go back to the shore. And he's like, kid, we're four miles down river already. <laughs> like, it's not happening. I'm like, oh, we actually got there hours ago. We're already in White Bridge. Chapter 21, listen <laughs> to the wind. <laughs> You're making fun of me. Wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> you make me fun It's a Nini chapter, POV. <laughs> And their location, I just wrote Riverside Camp? Oh. Yeah. They're on the uh, western side, or whatever you want to call it, south side. Oh, God. Yeah. Never do that again. <laughs> um, the knee's asleep. Again, just passes out. Just finds a... She found a hollow. A small hollow. Can we... Uh, she's lucky that that horse that she's... She's also not soaking wet. That's true. <laughs> and then that horse... I mean, from the river. Maybe she is. Didn't just fucking just walk off with her, just dragging her across <laughs> the fucking sticks. Well, like, Nani, I mean, Aguin, as we see later, she made a fire, so it's like, all right, okay. But she channeled it. <laughs> but she made a fire, though. Yeah. So she's not, I mean, yeah. it's very reasonable that she doesn't. It's really the parent one that bothers me. Yeah, it's the parent one. It's the he just got tossed a goddamn river, had to swim 30 yards at least, probably more like 100. And then stop Also, Nanib just like everyone else, has her horse, has all her stuff. Yeah, she probably is. Quick. Parent also had to drop his cloak off down the fucking river. His boots are soaked with water. I, I, he dropped his cloak or he just. Yeah, he tore pepper sand tight. It was holding him down. Oh, uh, okay. So, like, again, one piece of clothing fewer. You know, in every, like, in the greatest ch- uh, book cover art on the planet. <laughs> Parent is often depicted as wearing like a furry vest with no shirt underneath. <laughs> it's not in this. Not in this. Oh, one. on the front of book nine, <laughs> maybe. No, no, in I three. 
It's a book three. Dragon Reborn, he's holding the sword a lot, and Perrin's like, has like a weird green bandana and is wearing like a leather, he, he looks like he's wearing a suede vest with fur underneath, like the fur is <laughs> popping out on the edges. <laughs> yeah. We could take it out right now yeah. if you want to look at it. Oh, but it I'm just saying there's multiple times when Baron's like wearing no clothes. <laughs> and people depicted him just like, what? Just because he's a wolf brother doesn't mean he's not wearing a shirt anymore. Well, do you see wolves wearing shirts? Blacksmiths wear more clothing because they don't want sparks of metal to hit their skin no they just wear (laughs) sleeveless tees yeah they just wear sleeveless suede vests with puffy fur rim lining yeah so not, that won't catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and then they wear an apron. That's it. They no call gloves, this, no nothing. They call this my cum jerkin Yeah. <laughs> Is it leather? No. It's cum. So Neneve notes that they, the Trollocs know the smell of who they want. Who? Oh. Because <laughs> the Trollocs found her and then was like... <laughs> that pussy's wrong. Basically like, smelled her and was like, eh, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> You know what that is? Need to bathe. Not her time of the month? Clearly did not have her bathing scene in Barrelon, right? Because they weren't... Yeah. Just, they didn't smell blood? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why we don't have more patrons. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just... It's just a theory. It's just a theory. Just a theory. <laughs> Trollocs love blood. <laughs> Trollocs love killing shit. Yeah. They didn't Obviously, smell blood. there was no blood to smell here. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, so basically Trollocs, is it all Trollocs? I mean, if you're a bird Trolloc, for instance, are you the kind of Trolloc that's like, smell this piece of, piece of a shirt? That's the smell of Randolph Thor. Now find me him. And he's just like, and you're like, that's not it. Aganor was running low, so he's got like a macaw Trolloc. <laughs> Just really goddamn annoying. Oh, man. <laughs> Randolph Thor! <laughs> The Meardrop Butler's not amused. The, that macaw is always talking in the fucking library. <laughs> Mitchell Butler really pissed off at the macaw trolley. <laughs> it's just gonna make a weirder group of like animals. Just <laughs> do you, oh, we forgot to do our breakdown thing. Um, she finds Moran, Moran and Lan. She eavesdrops on them. Finds out she can channel the one power. Uh, that's kind of the whole chapter. Yeah, I mean, like, I yeah. mean, I could go into more detail, but we're about to do that. But that's kind of the high beats of this chapter. Yeah, that's there you go. She finds Ryan and Lynn. Yeah, finds out she can channel. See you later. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she finds them. She, my mistake. No mistake. So she finds them and uh, she starts eavesdropping on them and. I'm fascinated by this conversation that, like, we know how they do it at first. Yeah, yeah. But it, or we know how to do it later. But at first, it's like, how do they get a fucking thousand Trollocs here? We had at least four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, at least four. Actually, there were five years and only four left because one of them got uh, taken so, up by Mashadar. I think my main takeaway from this chapter is that this, this is the first, like, real, I mean, not that you were too suspicious of them on a first read. But this is your first real confirmation that they actually aren't, like, dark friends or yeah. fucking them over. I mean, everything up until this point, you could still be like, are they leading us into a trap? Are they doing this on purpose? Like, Yeah, Rand is making... having these dreams about Yeah, Tar-Balan. yeah, like, all yeah. this stuff. Rand has, Rand has dreams about Tarvalon. This is the first chapter, because you're hearing them talk without knowing that Nuneeve is there. Yeah. And they're just honestly saying, like, well, we need to find them, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, you know, like, yeah, this yeah, is fuck the, the dark one. And the blah, greats blah, blah. are good. Yeah, yeah. And, they, like, they say specific things, you're just like, wow. Oh. Did you have concerns about that? No, though? I don't think I did. But, I mean, I, I, and maybe I'm just not a less, but a more cynical person might, or, yeah. like, a more suspicious person might, for sure. Well, especially if you're and trying this, to go and with even, a trope. And well, if you're extra suspicious, head. you could also say, yeah, exactly. And if you're extra suspicious, you could also say, well, they knew she was there, so she was, they were having a conversation that they knew she could hear. But at the same time, you're just like, you kind of know that's not the case, though. Because, like, five seconds later, she's like, oh! And she knows she's there, and, like, you can come out now, Miss Amira, or whatever, you know, kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And again, that could have been staged, but it seemed real. Yeah. So that kind of indicates that the conversation before was real, which kind of indicates that they're not pieces of shit. If you were worried about that at all. I guess I was. kind of what I'm saying. Uh, she mentions the token, the bond thing, and then she mentions, well, if that's the case, 
Well, they don't know how to travel, or they can't travel because there's no... And if they do, that means there's Forsaken. But we know that Trollocs can't go through it. Well, that was clearly travel. a retcon. Yeah, yeah retcon, kind of right. But she does mention that, well, the ways are closed. Well, most She of says her. the ways are closed. <laughs> well, they, to her knowledge, I assume that is pretty straightforward. I mean, the ways are closed. They aren't. <laughs> They're not. I mean, they, they, they close... They're closed like normal. Like there's a, there's just a lock on the front door. As long as you know how to lo- use the lock, like you can get it in. It does seem out. weird that she mentions that, and then she even like uses it as a last resort. Meaning she knows they're not actually closed; they're just closed. Like the door is closed, but the door can be opened. I'm wondering if she's thinking the ways are closed, as in no one's regrowing more uh, way gates or growing. Or I mean, yeah, obviously no one uses them. But but no one's growing more way gates, so she's thinking True. no one's growing more way gates. I think for them to maybe be used. she meant it more in the. Uh, like, no one would be dumb enough to use the ways. Yeah. Like, kind of a thing, like, less than, like, they're all locked and can't be used. I yeah. think, but if they can be used at all, wouldn't you just be like, well, that's a way. Yeah, literally. Like, obviously. Yeah. You know, like, that's a way. They could do it. And, you know, she should understand more than anyone kind of the ideas behind, like, when these ways were used, which would be at least through the Trolloc Wars, uh, because Manethrin had one. Uh, obviously, Aridol has one. Um, and Static Shanghai has one, and that's a pretty recent, recent uh, setting. I think the Static Shanghai, no, not Static, so Static Sofu. Sofu, yeah. Uh, I think they was discovered like eight hundred years ago, something like that. Which means that they've been used in the last millennium. So again, you know where these things are, and you know where you've most you've been close to Manetherin, you've been close to Air at all. So you know that. Wait a minute, that seems coincidental, or more. Maybe she's just operating under the assumption that the again, black it's a, could get anything. Yeah, and that like Which, even they're not dumb enough to use them, and there must be dark friends or some other way that they're the getting. The terminology's off. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. There's no defense defending this one. Yeah, there isn't. Yeah, but anyway. So to me, this is a frustrating part because I love Nynaeve. Like I find I like Nynaeve more throughout the entire book than I entire series than Egwene. But her yeah. obstinacy, which I know is both one of her good characteristics, is also one of her more annoying. And this is one of those that is a to me the only part of the need really spot. is frustrating with her obstinacy is when she's so anti Moraine. No, that, that doesn't bother me at all. Actually, I mean, from her perspective, I would hate Moraine too. Why? Moraine didn't do anything. Her perspective is 100% She's wrong. She's the cause of all these problems. I mean, her perspective is wrong. That's the whole point. Um, I'm just saying, like, uh, I think it's yeah. the part with, it's the parts with, like, Matt and stuff, like, way later where I'm just like, oh, my God, just climb off your high horse and say, thank you for saving me, blah, blah, blah. I don't mind. I don't need being... you to save me, but fine, but or whatever. But it's, like, it's little parts like that, that, that drags on for, like, three fucking books or something. It's, like, stupid. The anti Moraine stuff drags on for ten. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It drags on for seven, four, eight, nine, five, and more than that. That's one. Anyway, well, she dies at five. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> and she still eats her after that. I know. Yeah. Uh, so to me, this is just kind of. Again, so you I want some tea? Not. You can. Uh, you can use a one power. You want some tea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your fucking tea. Your tea's stupid. I wouldn't drink it if I were dying. <laughs> it does smell good though. This is really cool. I mean, this is when we get Moraine describing the blossoming of the One Power in someone, and like what that means, and like it's so the shivering and the and all that stuff. That done. Yes, and what was happening with Rand <laughs> that we didn't know yeah. yet. Still, or you might look I, back at that and go, "Oh, wait a second, you know, kind of thing at this point. But like even now, like yeah, it's it's brilliantly done. Like, it's you may it's have, laced in there in a very subtle way where you might not have realized that that's what was happening around. It's like literally. You read that, then you're like, hey, what chapter was I in? Oh, I must have been in chapter 20. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what just happened. Oh, I was also in chapter 21. Damn it. Uh, so, this is also annoying to me that is this affinity for how she can feel where a queen was because she healed her. I think that's a really cool aspect. And the fact that it was abandoned pretty much immediately because like, that's how Nynaeve was able to get to the Stagon line in Baelon. Episode 2 of Twatcast, John is annoyed that we never see the affinity between Nynaeve <laughs> and Egwene. <laughs> <laughs> Probably said it the exact same way, too. Ever again. 
You also mentioned that they don't use the coins as to or tokens at all to like keep track of each other, which would make a lot of sense. I mean, they have the swirling colors later, but that's just happenstance. Like, yeah. why didn't they just go like? Once Moraine does have them this all is back my together, coin. yeah. Was, why doesn't yeah. she go like, "Here's a coin, everyone"? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, why is that never used again? Um, I said something along the lines of like, "Well, maybe it's kind of like a thing only she does," or. You know, like, because you kind of mentioned it in the broader scheme of, like, why the fuck does that never come up again? And I was like, well, maybe it's something, like, she has a weird skill, like, eavesdropping or, like, Did you I know, that kind the of thing. prequel? What? The, in the prequel? Uh, I don't think so, no. In the prequel, there's, like, a whole bunch of, like, once you get into the blue aja, there's some, like, blue aja-centric magics. Like, magics you mentioned channel. something about just the blue aja, but you didn't mention oh. prequel or Yeah, whatnot. so it, it, they mentioned that there's, like, some things, like, and that's why, if you remember, she can do things with ants. Um, that she gets into all bite. Oh, yeah, it's that. Yeah, she yeah. gets into bite land. Like that's like one of those like small ma- like uh, weaves they know that others don't supposedly. Like and so there's individual like we know. I know how to do this. Like that's why there's mm-hmm. a few people who have learned how to eavesdrop in a way or minor levels of compulsion. I said something along the lines of this, but I'll reiterate again. Like I said, I and them being secretive towards each other and even each other within their own Aja is like so fucking stupid and retarded. Yeah. And that's what causes yeah. all their fucking problems in the first fucking place. Yep, 100% agree. But uh, yeah, that's that. And I'm like, maybe that's why, you know, like kind of thing. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I was just laughing because you literally mentioned the infinity part. But on that note, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Like what the fuck? They didn't, like, Neneve and Egwene are separated a lot. Yeah. And she should be able to find her, like, that... Maybe yeah. it fades over time. It, that's an easy explanation, although, like, the breakbone fever is, like, when 12 to 14. But still, we can call yeah. it that. Uh, and also, well, Egwene... Well, it doesn't... It's not supposed to go... I really like how Moraine was like, was it Nene- was it Egwene or Perrin? And, like, it's... Because I was just like, oh, fuck, this is kind of cool. She's... The way she figures it out and likes it... Yeah. And because she goes... Let me guess. You did this. You did that. Maybe a branch fell when you were drowning. Maybe this happened when you couldn't reach something. Or maybe blah, blah, blah. And she's like, and also, I'm guessing that you healed somebody with the one power. And it was Perrin or Egwene. And she goes, she goes, she even says, like, I'll go one step further. I bet it was Perrin or Egwene, blah, blah, blah. Because they were the only ones at the inn yeah. or something. And I was like, damn, that's a fucking kind of cool scene. Yeah. She listed a little behind the curtain of, like, what the eyes that I can do at the yeah. same time. It doesn't feel like an info dump. Yeah. And it's kind of really cool. Uh, she's just kind of like, fuck you, Neneve. How about, uh, how about fuck you, but also join us. But also maybe, don't if you don't want to, because I don't really want you here. Maybe it's someone whose name starts with an R, or no, 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 has an R in it. And maybe there's something about a... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe a banjo or a piano or a weird penis. I'm feeling piano. Okay, yeah. piano. Yeah. Um, is it maybe a relative who may or may not have died, but considered killing her? <laughs> it's not what you're doing. Yeah. It's just, uh, no, none of those. Well, at least Naive, but I, as much as I was frustrated, at least Naive acquiesces. Like, she's like, I can't do that. All right, maybe I can't. Please don't talk. All right, fine. Yeah. But, don't yeah, and she's, but then she's embarrassed. Also, I really like, again, the little, little microscopic hints, like, Nenea was a little like she blushed or something when Lance said something like way back in Barillon and like yeah. in this moment like when Brain Len burst. not like going about his business and once they start talking about the one power he's kind of like oh not my business and he kind of like walks away and starts yeah. bustling and doing other things but then like when he finds out that Neve can channel, he's kind of like, hmm, like speculative and yeah. kind of like a little more like it's just like any you know you know what he's thinking that pussy's not aging. <laughs> And all my thoughts are gone. <laughs> so she concludes with, I can use the power against you. Which yeah, basically it's like, you can come with us or not. I don't give a shit. And then she's like, because yeah, you... Cause, reverse psychology works really goddamn well. well also, no, I kind of think she doesn't care if she comes. Because she's she has a, a wall or, a, you know, like, or whatever to get past later. But, like, she doesn't give a fuck. She, you're, you're past the you're going to die part. With the one power, so I don't care. Go with the fuck back to Two Rivers. You know, like, I don't think Moraine... I think she did. It's part of the pattern. Because she knows this from talking with me. Well, she says... She no, but she doesn't know that. Because she goes, 
Lance says, is she part of the pattern? And she goes, I don't know, maybe. I should have talked to men one more time. Oh. She literally says that. Oh, well, so it's like one of those things where you're like, oh, okay. Well. Way to use the whole reading thing against me. <laughs> Re-re-read. Re-read. Um, anyway, she mentions the tokens again, and she goes, well, I gave them a token. I bought, you know, like, one of them's mine. The other two aren't. That's why we're going after them. <laughs> or possibly aren't. You know, kind of thing. That's why we're going after them. And she's like, what about a queen? Who gives a shit? And she's like, I don't know. And she's like... <laughs> You just said all this shit about making sure she lived and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I can't help her. Yeah. She's either with one of them or not. Yeah, and, like, and I'm just like... It's so It's so perfectly it's correct. Logical as fuck. Yeah. You might as well have been a white Aja. Yeah. Or a man. <laughs> chapter 22. A Path Chosen. This one's A Path about- Chosen. And this is the chapter where we should have talked about Perrin, his point of view, and how cold he was. <laughs> He's in a random field across the river. That's what I wrote. You know, I was stayed warm, by the way. I figured it out. A path chosen. Obviously, Lanfear or someone kept him warm all night. Chosen. It's in the title. Clearly. Yeah. Clearly. One of the forsaken, man. Um, so how would you like to wake up covered in tree branches, wet, needled all night, having tossed <laughs> all your clothes? Yeah. He's I know, I know, I know. Nettles. It's just, I know. It's, it's just, fine. it's just fine. Or acupuncture. Wet Maybe needled. It feels great. <laughs> it's got me real warm. How would you like to feel wet and needled? Not at all. <laughs> oh, cold wet and needled? No. I'm out. Yeah, so anyway. Hold on. Parent wakes up, uh, finds a queen. They choose a path. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of it. Anyway, so yeah. he is he, He's not scared. He's worried, right? He's not scared. Is he scared or worried? Or both? Is that a question or is that just... I'm asking. Oh. Does it sound like you're... He's gonna, uh, no, he's, uh, he's more worried. I think he's scared. He's more worried. Yeah. He's, he's scared for the others. He's scared of the dark. He's a scared of the park, too, which is what he's in, essentially. Uh, <laughs> An enormous park. <laughs> it really is. By the way... The Wheel of Time is filled with parks. It's just outside of every city limits is an enormous park. <laughs> So his horse, like we talked about earlier, we got yeah, probably dead, right? Yeah, his yeah. horse is probably dead. Still just clumping up against that fucking... Well, what's that <laughs> noise that gets the shit? <laughs> it gets, what we don't know is it gets caught on one of the oars from Bale Dumb's just ship, and it's just... The goo, goo, the goo. <laughs> <laughs> just... Just macabre as fuck. Just, oh my god, is that a dead horse in the water? <laughs> so, by the way, good news, Master Luhan... He does the double cross of his horseshoes. Well, I thought that was a kind of a pretty cool note, actually. I did too. <laughs> but I thought it's, that was kind of neat. It's very helpful that he could. Do you think everyone in the two rivers is like, oh, that's Master Luhan's shoe, or would would it just be like some of them, or like probably just some of them? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's kind of like the only have, blacksmith yeah, in the area. They, so I guess all of them. So when you saw a horseshoe print that didn't have that mark, you'd be like, oh shit, that Master Luhan didn't make that. Yeah. Like, it must be a black rider of some sort. You know? <laughs> we don't call them black riders. It's different. <laughs> it was oh, property. Yeah. African American riders. Yeah. It's going more for the... Uh... <laughs> I know. That's what, I know. They're that's called what made it funny. writers, what not made it writers. Funny. That's what made it funny. Uh, oh, you mean Hobbiton. Yeah. Hobbiton. Um, he says something like one thing at a time and the most important thing first. He kind of, in this chapter, his perspective, he sort of blatantly outlines how he thinks. Yeah. And I really think Rand, or, or like, Rand, what the fuck? I really think Brandon Sanderson kind of like wrote that down and was like, and that's how I'm going to make him for all three books because he really hammers that in a, later on. B, C, D. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if he's rereading these books and he's, like, writing down notes of, like, oh, okay, that's what makes a parent chapter and that's what makes a Matt chapter. I feel like the Matt chapters are a little less defined. There's no point where Matt goes, this is how I think. Weird this and this. question for you. So, one of the things, and I, I don't know if you remember, um, and this may be a piece that we could pull out for later episodes, really, is... I remember when Sanderson, like when he got the job to be to finish the Wheel of Time, obviously like he was one of the most engaging, you know, a lot of compliments to have about it. Sure, but he's just like I'm going to reread all the books and take notes. Yeah, he did. Like you that said, was one of the first things he did. And like, like you said, like he was trying to kind of like pick out the essence of the characters, and I think some of them he hit, some of them he missed wildly. We've talked about that, but one of the things that's I think very interesting is that you may have been kind of dead on and that he kind of made like the bulk of his notes almost 
like on the from, initial on book. the front yeah. because that's a when he started to read yeah and b if he's starting to do that kind of reread thing all the like time. if you're writing this is your parent is as a character as an author yeah this is your first note yeah this essentially is, yeah this is your first like, note he's a very deliberate thinker yeah yeah and then if you're thinking about it because you started to read 25 years ago, you're right. thinking, oh, that's how Perrin was. That's my memory of Perrin because that's It is how he is. And that's what I was – and I, my next note is the fail obsession is explained in this book. Yeah. <laughs> the most impo- – one thing at a time, the most important thing first. That fail, is, fail, his, fail, 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 that fail, is fail. his character from the millisecond fail gets captured until the millisecond fail gets rescued. Wow. And now, wow! What's like two? just wow? <laughs> two, I can now put my dick in things again. What's three? I'm now relaxed. I can go help out the world. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's the last battle. I'll begrudgingly let Fail do something else while I do something else. Yeah. That being said, I've got a lot of testosterone to burn in this battle, and I'm going to sink my dick. And also, John, in my notes are he finds some whores marks, <laughs> and those are, and he knows it's Master Lewin's. Horse, horse shoes. Are horse marks... You said it differently than I said it. That's all I'm saying. Is it STD? <laughs> yeah, horse marks. Yeah. 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 So horse leave marks. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the mud. In the, in the earth. Uh, yeah. You know? They leave a lot of horse marks around. By the uh, way, so what were you we saying? A, uh, we, could, we can flesh that out later more. I just thought it was very interesting kind of... I think like what you had said, I thought I really agreed with this kind of... You know, well, it really is Perrin's character boiled down to a, like a single phrase. And like it's pretty amazing. I was like, wow, that kind of holds true like the entire time. I mean, that is very like if you boil him down to nothing, that's him. But I think that that's one of the problems is, and you know, this was obviously not meant to be a jumping off and like let's you mm-hmm. know kind of kick around the Sanderson because again, eh. I love the books that he yeah. did. I'm eternally grateful because I think they're a great books and b. They fucking exist. And by yeah, the way, that, I want you to know. A, I think it's a they exist and b they're fucking good. Thank yeah. you. By the way. But I want you to know that a I realized last week after you said you keep or Tom said you keep fucking doing enumerations and enumerations. Oh yeah. Like so a and, a, and one then, usually I get cut off before I get to b so it's like well a this and two this and d, d yeah so I'm like god damn it stop fucking enumerating everything or I guess alliterating um, but. I think that he did a great job. There's no doubt about that. And I think that I'm eternally grateful for it. But he fucked up a lot of things. And I think that you may have really hit on some of the reasons that they were both the positive and negatives is that he really yeah. spent a lot of his time reading these books. Because he would always make, look, this is what I'm doing. This is what matters to me. This is what I think of my character. And because they're not his characters, he's trying to interpret them through this filter. Right. And the filter is the del- deliberate thought process the filter is that and like, these are my thought like, my desires as yeah Aaron Abara. I think you fucking he it. just never once ever again Evolved. lays out so succinctly like how he thinks other than this one moment but I mean I like think he evolves. continues to do it yeah he evolves but I don't think Sanderson gets some of the evolution of the characters sure but I mean uh, uh, File was rescued in what 11. 11, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, he was still the same. Yeah. Like, up until that point. Well, no, but Fayil was, in fact, the worst character that's in the book. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, good to disagree. Who's your call? Elaine! Oh, God. <laughs> I hate Elaine. Yeah, I hate just, Elaine. Fayil. <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't like... I don't like love Fael or anything. Yeah. Like everyone's like, oh, I hate her. I'm just like, she's she's annoying, yeah. and she sucks at times. She's also really cool at times. But I can see where you're coming from, and blah blah blah. But like people that like Elaine just blow my mind. Her and Gwen, they're the worst. <laughs> they're the worst humans <laughs> in this entire series. <laughs> anyway. Well, he finds Egwene at a fire. By the way, first off, Egwene, great at uh, Stone Age time. She's got fire and she's got clubs. She's ready to hit anyone. She's got a horse. Yeah. She's ready. Yeah, she's ready. Yeah. She's great for a lot of kind of just really old looking, like, a, you know, three, four. She has thousand. food. Yeah. Not a lot. She has some. <sighs> but can we talk about what a bitch she is? Yeah, she's pretty bitchy. Parent, I you know what actually I kind of noticed. Like, 
for instance, if it was Rand that found her, yeah, it would have been oh, they're fucked nonstop bickering, oh, and just fighting all the time. They would have been shouting at each other in the woods. It would have been found like immediately by Trollocs or something. <laughs> We had time to build a way gate over I mean, here. they were with Moraine, and they were shouting at each other over a fire. <laughs> About a few chapters. Well, I said I, dog. <laughs> I, I said I. But Perrin, like, has this way of being like, a queen, you're being stupid. And she's like, ah, mm-hmm. I kind of am being stupid. All right, it's fine. You got me. You got me, Perrin. <laughs> and, like, and it doesn't happen a lot, and she does continue to do, like, she nails obstinately yeah. kind of does annoying things here and there, but, like, not, I feel, if it wasn't Perrin, I feel like this would have gone very badly. Like, if she was with Matt or Rand, this would have been a very bad situation. <laughs> like, of all the people to find her, thank God it was Perrin, I guess is what I'm saying. It, I would agree, I guess, because I Even think... the Neve, they, they fought endless. they fight endlessly. What's the commonality Neve. here? It sounds like it's a queen. It's kind of a bitch. Uh, I, I like the commonality. So well, I mean, I, I guess... But listen to this. So Perrin goes... For some reason, she's willing to let Perrin be... But not really. She, it's like you're a leader until it's not convenient. Yeah, but then he makes fun of her for it, and she's like, ah, oh, you got me. I am kind of being a dick right now. So Sorry, Perrin. Perrin you're, goes... Sorry, Perrin, you're right. I've but if it was thinking. Rand that was like, hey, fuck you, I thought we should decide that together... She would have been like, well, fuck you, Rand, rah! She would have, like, come back angrily again. You know what I'm saying? Like, a little bit, yeah. There's, like, moments where, like, she does those That's things. That's what love does. And Jim. then Perrin says something else, and she's kind of like, yeah, okay, you got me. All right, I'll listen to you. But he says, I've been thinking. And her response is to actually quirk an eyebrow at him, like, oh. Oh, well, have you? It's like, he's fucking retarded. You What's wrong with you, you bitch? Piece of shit. Well, every, <laughs> well, Perrin's perception, and granted, this is Perrin's perception, but his perception of everyone in the two rooms is that they all think he's an idiot. Because he thinks things through and does it intelligently. This, if he said, I've been thinking, Rand wouldn't just go, like, oh. Oh, oh have Rand? you, Perrin? Who's a good boy? Who's <laughs> you, a good boy? You've been using your brain? <laughs> yeah. Good job. That wouldn't, it, only this fucking bitch. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, that's pretty good. She literally arcs an eyebrow. She's also a teenage girl. Dirtbag. Remember that song? <laughs> yes, I remember teenage dirtbag. <laughs> He's like, I got two tickets to Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to hear some tunes? You know what they're playing? Camlin. <laughs> so he's been thinking, by the way, of uh, about your dad's map. and Maybe we went... I mean, even he's like... Southeast. She, also, hey, on that note, and it's subtle again, but like, her immediate like... And, all, and you're like, like you're mentioning she's kind of bitchy about it but at the same time she does kind of follow his lead and looks to him to be the leader so to speak of the two of them well I, I, that's why I'm saying she's a bitch because you know what she's doing like oh that's a good idea okay that works though right but as Perrin the character hmm. if I'm an author taking notes immediately he's thrust into a leadership position and him being in like this leadership position makes him uncomfortable but also he does it like immediately like I kind of look at the two rivers as being like oh he's somehow lord of the two rivers fun- suddenly and like all this stuff happened but like this has been seeding since the first book you know I mean, like going, yeah. little little piece I thought we were still making fun of the queen I'm sorry no 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 just yeah. back to Perrin's analyzation of a character that is Perrin like it's kind of interesting how very early he's like oh I'm a leader oh fuck what do I I know it's just this one person looking to me to make decisions whether or not she's being bitchy about it or not, it's not the point. She is. But it's like, <laughs> she, oh, she is. Yeah. But you know, it's just like it's kind of interesting that that's there already. I guess. True, and it's also interesting that his plan, while not a bad plan at all, is kind of rooted in the idea of uh, a map I haven't read real closely that doesn't have parameters, and we're just gonna go southeast, and I'll see you later. Yeah, he. I mean, he makes a decent. It's not a bad plan because you know. There's a good chance there's, uh, you know, shit here. Good chance there's shit there. But here's the thing. They know... They know they're north of the road. Yes. And I know his general plan is to head south-ish. Southeast. They want to hit the one. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Theoretically. East, But wouldn't you just go south? Well, they're worried about what happens if they hit Whitebridge. Yeah, I know. Again, I get that kind of. Yeah. Kind of. But you're already kind of inland, 
Like by much, and it curves that. Yeah. Way. So, the, so on that note, go south. Travel east. two days southeast, and then travel south, or whatever. Like, just like, why are you constantly like, like Ellie just like makes a joke at them in the next yeah, chapter. You're going straight east, don't fuck. You're going to Gamla, <laughs> like you know, like kind of thing. Like you're no fucking way. But it's like, you know, the map's shitty. You know, you're basing your entire plan off this shitty map. Just. Head in one dire- head your in a direction where you think you're safe for X amount of time, and then head in the direction that you know you'll find civilization, or at least a road that will take you to civilization. Well, you know, always, like that's kind of like that's logical, right? Like, wouldn't you do that? It's always, I would just meander endlessly through the wilderness, hoping I was going to hit a city. I would meander will through the wilderness purposefully. And then head down to the road that I know is there at some point. I guess the only danger is that the road isn't built up enough and there's a possibility you could cross it without realizing you're crossing the road. There's no way. Uh, because, I mean, the map, the road they would be crossing would be the, <laughs> the Camelon Road. The Road, yeah. However, I'm just saying, like, I don't know the Camelon Road. They don't know the Camelon Road. There may possibly be points of that road that don't look like anything much more than just packed earth. And they could theoretically cross the road without knowing. I'm just saying, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I don't think they would either. I'm just saying, like, if, even if that's a worry that you have, wouldn't you still kind of head more south than east, just like based on where you are? You know, one of the things that I've never really thought about. That's, that's all I'm saying. By the way, I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah. And to your point, so when you look at the main map, and mm-hmm. not that you're going to do it, so it took them about a day, you know, 24... Well, no, it took them a week to get from Emmonsfield to Barillon, right? And they only had a couple nights <coughs> to get to... Right, out of Barillon, they only had a couple, two or three nights, I think, from leaving Barillon before they were attacked and then ran to the north to get to the river. Why don't we just say Chapter 23, Wolf Brother, <laughs> parents respective, they're in the Caroline Grass... And move on with our lives before we start going down this road. But anyway, continue. Fine, chapter 23. <laughs> well, that's scroll. it. Just continue. Uh, so, back to where I was. Yeah. So, I'm looking at both maps. The one that's on page uh, right before chapter 13 mm-hmm. and just the main map. And we'll assume that they're past the River Haven, which I'm not even sure they should be. Because that is halfway between White Bridge and Can- uh, Barrelon anyway. <clears throat> Doesn't make any sense for them to have gotten that far. And why I'm saying that because... Uh, we never see Egwene and Perrin cross that. No. Uh, there's another piece of uh, river, river tributary that they also never cross. Maybe it's just not mentionable. Maybe it's not like a... There's not a bridge. It's a landmark, though. It's, yeah, there's not a bridge. I, I, well, it's also, I guess what I'm saying is, like, why shoot for a city that you know the map that you... You're basing this knowledge off a map that you know is inaccurate. He even says that. Yeah. Or he assumes that, at least. Yeah. No, I get you 100%. And then you're shooting for a city based on a location that you're not even sure where you're at. Like, it's just it's so illogical. Like, yeah, just, just head to the road. Yeah, yeah. Angle you know, a little bit more conservatively. Yeah, yeah. you know you're going to hit the road, and then when you hit the road, you know it'll take you into Camelin. End of End of story. I agree. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, no, we got here at Four Kings. And the oh, only thing that would have happened to them that... I'm not saying everything that happened to them wouldn't have happened to them. I'm just saying, like, the only thing that would have really changed is that they might have gotten to the point where they're like, we've been, say, traveling south for, like, a couple of days now, and we still haven't seen this road. I'm starting to freak out, like, we've somehow crossed it, or, you know, blah, blah, blah. That might happen. Yeah. But eventually, they're just going to hit the fucking road, and they're going to oh, never mind. We were wrong. We were, all, we were just a day further away from it than we thought, or whatever. Ugh. Yeah. Just logical. Yeah. Sorry, so anyway, me. they travel for days. They meet Elias. Um, basically, Perrin learns he's a wolf brother. And uh, they kind of convince Elias to help them travel. Yeah. That's basically... I mean, he's like loosely like, all right, fine, for a while. That's kind of it. It's a good self-learning chapter. Well, maybe not yeah. self-learning, but Perrin also learns that Egwene's been starting the fire... Uh, which well, just that by one. channeling, like, just like, that one, yeah, yeah, it had been one time, and it really kind of scares you know, scares the fuck out of him. Which is funny because 
Yeah, I wrote, he parent ignorantly freaks out. <laughs> he becomes parent oid. Oid? Mm. No one can see it, but I'm doing the people's eyebrow right now. <laughs> you should see what I'm doing with my people's elbow <laughs> by hitting myself in the dick with my elbow. <laughs> I see. You know what that is? Off the top ropes. I have a large um, Yeah, so they travel, they take turns riding Bella. <laughs> they eat some rabbit for dinner. By the way, well done. Next up. He barely got it, though. Mushrooms and two bars. Barely got it. 40 yards. What a shot. <laughs> yeah, That's when he really finds out. Weirdly accurate, by the way. We don't talk about too much like how accurate these guys are at throwing and slinging shit. I think this is still a microscopic amount of the Lord of the Rings bleeding into these books. <laughs> like the way the two rivers people can like shoot bows. But you know how like the way the, the hobbits can throw rocks? Yeah. It doesn't. Ravens, they don't. They don't. Top of the they don't do it game. in the movies too much. They do it in the movies a lot, but they never explain it. But like in the books, the hobbits are like really good at throwing rocks at a certain amount of speed with a certain amount of accuracy and like hurting stuff. So like when a hobbit's like Meh! and throws a rock at an orc, it's not just like. Well, I was lucky. Yeah, it's not just like a child throwing a rock. Like they know what they're doing, kind of thing. And they never really like explain that in the movies. You're just supposed to understand it. But like. It's it's kind of silly. It, it's just one of those silly things where it's like he has a sling, he had a rock, he had a rabbit at X amount of yards or whatever, and X equals forty. He's just really good at slinging rock, you know. <laughs> you think about that Ron Swanson with his wife commercial about slinging. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, uh, Megan Mullally and uh, what's his name who plays Ron Swanson? It's, Ron Swanson's his real name. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah. It's just them talking about what they want to do at home, slinging with their neighbors. <laughs> Sling TV. <laughs> Paid for by Sling TV for Twatcast. They're one of our patrons. It's not true. I do... Give us your on mind. the note of Perrin ignorantly freaking out about the one power, they've all been doing it, so it's fine. Even Neneve, who can channel, yeah. is like, fuck you, I will never do that! And she's like, all right, fine, I do, fine. Yeah. I'm going to use it to get back at you! You know, like, kind of, yeah. like, it's insane. Like, they're all acting fucking crazy when it comes to anything doing dealing with the one power. It reminds me of when I hit puberty... All I was going to say is, like, oh. I do appreciate a Gween's Embracing of it? Yeah, stubborn refusal to not do it, though. Like, it's kind of... That's a very good indication of who she is way later in the books. You know, like... Well, to your point, kind of just what like, are I will absolutely not promise that. You know, kind of thing. And, you know, I'm just like... I, you can take it as, like... Oh, she's just being mean and bitchy. To no, I think Perrin's a really cool, like, this is part yeah, of me. Yeah, but, like, this is part of me. Now, Neve had a point where she's, <clears throat> a couple chapters back, she's like, well, what if it's actually a part of you? And then she kind of forced that voice down. Because, oh, yeah, like, yeah. And then this is a Gween being very kind of, like, open and just like, no, fuck it, it's a part of me. Uh, I think that's the right, you know, kind of way to feel about stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I just thought it was a cool little, kind of like how the last chapter was a little bit of like, oh, that's who Perrin is as a character. That's kind of a cool little insight into Egwene as a character as a whole throughout the whole series. Yeah, also Even when she's like captured by the Shan Chan and like everything, yeah. everything that comes later, it's just like, oh, that is really who Egwene is to the, to the core. And Especially she, when she's a Marilyn and like dealing with Gwen's bullshit whininess and like all the eyes that I being assholes around her and like just everything she's dealing with. At the end of the day, she's like, no, this is how we should be. You guys are fucking it up. She Left puts on, this is how we do it. Yeah. yeah. By the way, great Chandler. It took her, like, one fucking night in with, like, with Moraine to figure out how to make fire. Well, she's clearly gifted. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Like, really well done. Um, it is pretty cool. By the way, as you can imagine, I love this journey for the simple fact <laughs> that we're going to pass... <laughs> Random broken relics, broken pieces of man. Yeah, that's really cool. I was I wrote they're they're hungry. The land changes. They yeah. stumble upon ruins. And um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Like they mentioned, like not only did we see places where people built stuff that clearly hasn't been inhabited in God knows how long, but parents like I even felt like there were parts of this land that we were crossing that. Who knows if anyone's ever walked on this part of there? And I'm like, wow, that's that, that's desolate. You know, that like kind of thing. Like, they really, he really hammers home, like, how middle of fucking nowhere they are. And if you're not near a fucking river or a city or, like, anything a in road, road it's yeah. just like, Fuck Jesus it. Christ, it's just nothingness out there. Uh, I also love the fact that, why don't you go build up more on this 
you know what? Really convenient excuse. No one wants to go in it because of Shadar Lugoth. So Yeah, no, that was yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. All right. They're like, well, we could camp in this used to be a house. Yeah. But we're not going. It's a big old town. We're not going. Yeah. Because uh Bashar come out of it. I'm freaked out. <laughs> Just on everything. Um, hey, they don't know, man. They don't have Moraine to be like it's fine. It's just an old house. You know, kind of thing. Like, they don't know. They're just like, what the fuck is this? What if Mashadar is in here? The trolley's That's even worse. That's old. <laughs> it's, it's like some other old town. It looks older than Mashadar. Uh, I don't know. It looks older than Shatter Logoth, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool. I liked it. Uh, so he starts smelling rabbit. Yeah. He mentions that he was chased in the dreams. But then he moves on. But yeah, they find Elias. They, he smells his food. And I really love how, I really love that Elias made the food for them. And yeah, it's just like six, I've been watching you guys for days. <laughs> six rabbits. Like, how long was Elias watching them and like tracking them to where he was like, <sighs> I like the idea. These kids are gonna die. I gotta get them. I'm gonna make some food. <laughs> better plan. I like the idea that he actually just put better traps out right in front of parents' traps. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, just I got six rabbits over yeah. here. What do you got? Nothing. Like they were all about to fall into the traps. He just took them right out. Yeah. Just like, just, how come you didn't catch anything? I stole it from your <laughs> I stole it from your campsite. <laughs> well, I did. I mean, Perrin and Egwene are freaked out. They don't want to stay in one place for any length of time, so they can't only they can't really set snares out for any length of time. If they had camped in one spot for even a day, do you think they would have been all right? Probably not. Do you think the Trollocs would have overtaken them? No, the Trollocs are nowhere near them. The exactly. Yeah. But I still think they would have been all right. Oh, you... Yeah. Oh, they wouldn't have been. Yeah. You know why? Elias would have taken the rabbits. Yeah, they wouldn't have got the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elias would have then picked all they the They wouldn't have made any t- progress, and yeah. uh, they would have been screwed. There'd be no two bars, no mushrooms. Like, like Elias would have so drank again, the water. So, again, starving in the middle of nowhere is scary. Unless you're walking towards the Camelin Road. <laughs> And yeah. not this really, really far away city that you're hoping you might hit. Yeah. <laughs> if you go south, all is cool, man. I just fucking love when uh, Elias is like, you could have walked to the spot of the world on the path you're going. <laughs> you know that pissed me off last time. <laughs> I know. Was that on there? <laughs> I'm not. Oh, because I, I'm like, you can't walk past the fucking Tarvalon came on road without noticing, hey, I just walked past... <laughs> Like, that is one of the most heavily trafficked... Like, those are two of the biggest cities in the world with fucking wagons going back and forth all the time. <laughs> You're not going to just miss it. Just like, huh, what my was only, that? My only other notes from a old old episode us is Neneve is a control freak, and that's why she's really upset that Marie... <laughs> she wants to control the boys and Enigly. And, and then we wrote... I wrote... We said something like... Oh, we, Nineveh loved that Lan couldn't find the boy. Like, she was like, nailed it. He yeah. couldn't find them either. Yeah. Like, and I, we were just laughing. We were laughing about, like... How vindictive. Yeah. How yeah. <laughs> immediately, like, or vindicated she felt that Lan couldn't find them either. But she was found like, the I couldn't find them. Lan couldn't either. <laughs> nailed it. She started and we thought that was funny. And then you wrote, you said something about what happens to the Trollocs that are left. Yeah, which I actually thought was an interesting comment, which we haven't talked about, and that was a couple chapters ago. So the only thing that makes me disagree with my idea that maybe they went through air at all the ways is because we talked about the fact, or there's mention of the fact that they went south uh, towards White Ridge. I said something like maybe they all died, or a lot of them, or at least a shitload of them died in Shatterloga. Possible that a lot did, but there's mention that. But there's no way they all died. Yeah, the tracks go south. Yeah, but the air at all way gate is obviously. Within Eridol. Clearly, at least a sizable chunk maybe. chased after the boat. Yeah. Like, obviously. But maybe they went south, called it a day, and then the Trollocs went north to the way again. Yeah. But Lance said and there was, was like almost trawl. a thousand Trollocs. Yeah. Basically, all told. Well, that was beforehand. Yeah, oh, bef- beforehand, yeah. So maybe like half of them. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, we, I Even mean, if you're like rounding it up and you're like three quarters of them died in Shatter Logoth that's it's still tough. a shitload of fucking trolls yes yeah, that's a huge heavily mil- like yeah. armed fucking it's army two fists yeah. two and a half fists of Trollocs <laughs> still still running down the that side that could have fucking just destroyed Whitebridge because they would not yeah. have had a defense for that not at all yeah and it's not like they're going to be like, cut the bridge, it'll fall to the river. Wait, no, it's made of Quindle. <laughs> Damn it. Can't do that. We can't. They're just going to pour across the bridge. We can't do anything about it. 
Uh, so we're here with Elias. Yeah. Um, he invites them in. He has golden eyes. Oh! <laughs> he laughs at the Pats of Camelot, which I mentioned like three times already. My friends are coming. I like that he's like, my friend, not, hey, I'm friends with wolves that may be weird. But- I, I like it because they're like, hey, maybe you can help us. He's like, I don't like people. You know yeah. what I like? My friends. And then <laughs> you're just like, oh, shit, that's fucked up. What are your friends? Oh, wolves. These guys. So here's some questions. <laughs> Go. So there was, a, like I mentioned earlier, like in the last chapter when Perrin had just crossed the river or was looking for Egwene after they'd crossed the river and he's yeah. there. That his sharp eyes found the horseshoes of Bella's, because um, but it is now described as the sharp eyes. Would Perrin have changed into a wolf brother if he had never left the two rivers? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. I, I, I don't just, think that has anything to do with him leaving. I just think that's. I don't know. He lives in a pretty remote area. I was gonna say. Possibly not only in the sense of it seems it seems to me and this is pretty loose <laughs> but it seems to me that the wolves actually do need to sort of find you and discover that you can talk to them and then it kind of like starts the process so to speak <laughs> yeah because that's where it goes like, and that's sort of how it feels but I feel like parents even outside of Elias was in a remote enough area where he might have find, might have yeah. eventually Two Rivers has started that process. Yes. But if he was born in like Tarvalon, never saw a wolf Probably in his life. Probably not. Just got randomly woke up with golden eyes one day. No, no, definitely not. No. Or like an, you know, a fucking sea folk person just got like I was supposed to be a wolf brother, but whoops. Stuck mm. on the water all the time. Never I also really it. like how Elias mentions how long it's been since men have run with wolves or hunted with wolves yeah that's awesome (laughs) and he's like they remember time differently and he doesn't really like go into a lot of detail about it but what he does say it's basically like so the dawn of time yeah (laughs) you know you gotta the way he talks about it is like oh they remember things really differently and it was a long 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 time ago yeah before yeah, like, anyone did, they like the opening to Star like, Wars, but they add like seventeen longs. Yeah, but we also scrolled sideways instead of vertically. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's how long ago it was. Things scrolled sideways. Um, but yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of cool. I yeah, but I yeah, I think he would have been a wolf brother. Um, it does seem like you need the wolves to like as a catalyst. Yeah, to, almost, bro- to, to brother like, up. Yeah, to brother up. You need to have a brother to become a brother, you know? Like, it's, that's how it works. The Wayans brothers talk You just that. never come in contact with wolves? Yeah. Yeah, I assume you would never become a wolf brother. It's not like you just suddenly start lucid dreaming and, like, <laughs> wake up with golden eyes one day. Golden eyes. I've been talking to the- wolves in my dreams! It's weird! You smell like fear. <laughs> I guess what you're saying is, is there a small, small, small percentage of people that just live in cities, that have lived and died in cities, that yeah. have never seen a wolf, that are like, just like John were Spock. potential yeah. wolf brothers? Yeah, yeah sure, possible. Best at liver levels. What's wrong with him? <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess that's very possible. Um, well, I guess... But yeah, I think he, parents specifically, would have eventually turned well, I guess into probably. a werewolf, just like, uh, what's his name? That comes later. What's that? Oh, frog guy. Yeah, frog guy. Is it a frog? Frog brother. Because the guy's brother looks like a frog. Oh, yeah. yeah. Frog guy doesn't make what sense. Do I, what wolf. do we call him? Gnome. Gnome. <laughs> what? <laughs> it comes with a picture. Wait, what? <laughs> this is from uh, Watt.Fandom. There's a picture of Gnome? <laughs> what a fucking that? like royal purple and oh, god. Hey. <laughs> you know it's so funny my <laughs> I'm sitting far enough away from you and that's painted relatively realistically it looked just like some guy at the renaissance fair that they threw <laughs> <with> hay on <laughs> like, I didn't know that was a painting at first I was like what the fuck is that someone posing as no well, like, bow- we see him later on boundless <laughs> I forgot that yeah. Like, yeah we see him at the last battle yeah I forgot about that too I oh. read it recently Anyway, so I guess I've always been kind of confused by the fact that wolves can sense truth and all that, but we always see it 
Wait, it's in a const, uh, like, like, around. Do they sense truth, or is it just, like, they're smelling just, like, the way Perrin does later? That's what I'm wondering, too, is, like... I think like, they're just smelling. I think they're smelling Perrin. Like, they can Yeah, no, no, they are for sure, because they actually have mental images of the Trollocs and So, shit. can they smell a green line? Sure. Or are they smelling... They probably sense the heightened, like... Pulse rate and like you know like she's you know how he's yeah. like they smell uh, you know like uh, dr- yeah adrenaline whatever you know or whatever yeah. you know like like, like yeah other you know I can smell like that. that she's anxious and I can smell that she's this and I can smell you know like, yeah. but what if you were always again like, you were fucking cool with shit under pressure <laughs> sure are there so as a human lie detector test are the wolves fallible sure yeah well that's why I'm wondering how much is like, Gwen's just not a great liar I think. Uh, which but, is hilarious because they chose her because she's a better liar than Perrin, which means he's horrible. <laughs> but is he almost like a weird medium for them because he well, actually you, can tell. Because, like, well, Elias can... says the words, the wolves say you're lying, which I think is where the confusion comes in because I think he can tell too. I think he's just kind of like fucking with them a little bit, sort mm-hmm. of, Elias style. And it's just like, the wolves say you're lying. But what about this, though? Like, she's saying it, but he's mm-hmm. actually imagining the actual truth. Mm-hmm. And so, because he's imagining it, he's broadcasting it to the wolves on act. Oh, sure, for sure. So it's almost um, like... I think it's both. I think it's a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, he's definitely projecting thoughts to them, because they're clearly like, that's not what happened. God damn it. Stop thinking what's true. So would they have known she was lying... If he wasn't there, is that what you're asking? That's what I'm asking, yeah. Uh, I think yes. Again, assuming... Because you're going to have elevated adrenaline just to fucking tell the story. Yeah, yeah, I think yes. Okay. But maybe not, I guess, is the only answer there. (laughs) But I think they would have. But again, yeah, they're definitely... It's the two pieces, two sides of the coin that they're reading. You know, that they're like, oh, it's parents obviously telling us the truth without knowing it. And she's clearly lying because of these factors. And her redneck accent doesn't make any yeah. sense. Coming from and also, South. you guys are from Saldea? Come on. <laughs> really? I do think it's hilarious when she, when they're like... When <laughs> they both agreed... They have this well-crafted lie. <laughs> and they both ag- agree that a queen should tell it because parents the worst liar. Just hilarious. Um, oh, I love... Again, we get a little bit of background on him, um, Elias, without really speaking to anything. Yeah. Just that clearly he was around Aes Sedai at one point. They tried to gentle him. They being oh, a lot rats. of background. Yeah, but it doesn't have any... You don't understand the context. No, not at all. No, the context isn't there at all, but there's a weird amount of information. Yeah, but it's all... 100% well delivered oh they tried to gentle me yeah. it was the red Aja fuck yeah. them yeah, they said wolf away. brothers have nothing to do with the one power it wouldn't have worked yeah oh killing warders that's a bad business so you're like oh shit yeah <laughs> you have lived a life sir by the way I used to be one whoops yeah he doesn't nice say that at all uh, yeah weird looking penis basically the, at the end of the day they're like we can't hide or fight without Aes Sedai like, we can't just go hide with you and the wolves. Like, it's not going to work. Yeah. Like, they're com- the wolves, Ellie's is totally like, just come join me. Live in, yeah. the, live in the wilderness forever. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, eh, eh, it's not going to work. Smell weird. Let yeah. your red rocket fly. <laughs> <laughs> the wolves want you, but the queen can stay too. When was the last time Elias got off? Do you think he's fucking Dapple? I mean, she's pretty, <sighs> she's pretty hot. You think that? I mean, as far as wolves go. You know, maybe like, he's talking about like you know, kind of like the wet mornings of the dew. Do you think that's what he's, you know, kind of helping foment? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be such a good that's twicast for this week. <laughs> to you, man. But we have twat show thoughts to talk about. <laughs> Oh, do we? <laughs> well, yeah, I want to talk about some Twat Show thoughts. All right, well, that's Twat Show thoughts. <laughs> uh, do you have any thoughts about the Twat Show based on the chapters we just read, Jono? Well, I think obviously they're going to show Elias getting hard for Did you? pussy. He's just <laughs> nestling around. Did you see that uh, wolf video leak? No. Really? Is there a wolf video leak? Yeah. <laughs> no. It's a leak of a white cloak getting attacked by a dog running off a table. It's no. a guy in a white... Cl- All right, let me clarify, because I don't know anything for sure. Here's the thing about the leaks and stuff, by the way. I don't want to discuss them 
per se. But once they've been seen by like every fucking one, like who cares? Well, I, also I won't don't... be the person that's like, hey, let's talk about this thing that just got leaked from the Wheel of Time show and ruined shit for the show for everyone. But once it's been out there, like just, you know. Goal, Atlanta United. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And pushing them up 2-1 in the champions. Yes. yes. Anyway. Uh, yeah, but I, just like once something's been ruined, it's like, well, it's been out there. Is it also ruining? Some of these things are leaked as a way of kind of. Well, uh, well, there's the t- well. Here's the thing: there's the official releases, like the picture that we discussed earlier, and there's the non-official releases, which is some asshole recorded something on a phone and put some grainy footage up, and it's clearly like without special effects and it's from a weird angle and it's not actually what's being shot and like the people that are running the show don't like to see it because it'll ruin stuff and like yeah but it's the but i guess my point is like at this point at this juncture for this specific leaked image like we discussed the random mat leaked image to death but that's because everyone else is disgusted to death so who cares it's not like we're like perpetu or like you know like sending something out in the world that's like not supposed to be legal anyway there was a leaked video of, like, a dog running on a table and, like, leaping off the table and jumping onto a guy that's wearing a white cloak and he falls on the ground. And obviously the camera is positioned where, like, through creative perspective, it's going to look a little bigger and he's going to, you know, and maybe they'll CGI it a little bit or something and make it look more wolf-like. But, you know, it was a wolf-like dog. Like a husky, what color wolf was it? Like a husky-looking dog. Right, so more like <clears throat> that ghost. No. Just catch it. <laughs> no. Rod Show? Uh, I don't know. It was, you know, brownish, grayish, white. Okay. Uh, summer. Kind of like a like a like any wolf would look. Or maybe yeah. Hopper. Probably Hopper. I mean, obviously, it's the yeah. scene where most likely yeah. <laughs> where Egwene and Baron get pinned down by the white cloaks and those wolves start attacking. So the sheriff from Stranger. The key is that they're doing the wolves. They're doing the white cloaks. Like yeah. stuff's happening in the show. Like there's a lot of information you get from like one leaked. Yeah. Quick video. Um, well, I think that's what the fuck needs to happen. I mean, because that's... Oh, yeah, for sure. Key no, it's Injury Girl. From I, this, this is show. the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Like, these... So, all, all the other... Po- I don't know what the other podcasts are doing, because I don't, like, listen to a million other podcasts, but, like, a lot of the YouTube channel guys are really speculative mm-hmm. and like they're just like what about this and what about the, what do you think about uh, what if they don't do the O gear at all and then Loyal's cast you know kind of thing yeah. and you're just like well that oh, you're said, out the you three week. episodes yeah. about like why why the the O gear should or shouldn't or couldn't or won't be in the show and then Loyal gets cast and all, everything you just did is gone so that's what yeah. we try not to do here I guess sort yeah. of in a way we make our in a weird way conspiracy theories brilliant <laughs> We also just don't like comment on things right away and just go like, eh, give him give him a minute to show us or tell us what's actually happening. Comment, we're drunk. Yeah, and also, uh, yeah, we're drunk. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, but yeah, know, it's a niche. So you didn't see it though. Is the point? No, I did not. All right. Well, it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's gonna be neat, and I can't wait to see like fuck yeah, Elias and like. The wolves huh. fucking yeah. ripping apart white cloaks <laughs> and that kind of thing. Burn telling his jokes. Sick <laughs> yeah, burn. Burns is gonna be like, "Fuck you guys, I'm out." Sick burn. And Doppel's like, "Get out of here, we don't want you anyway." Um, I wonder how big uh, Bill Dooman's ship is gonna be. Well, it's supposed to be eighty feet long. Yeah, but how? Like, so here's the thing: like, it's we don't a show. Like how long a foot is? They could scale things down. You know what I mean? Scale like. That. Just small it's still a little solo. Yeah. It's got the three guys on it. Yeah. <laughs> Once Rand, Matt, and Tom get on there, it's overloaded. Capsize. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come to my captain's quarters, so we'll discuss it. He just moves to the edge of the boat. <laughs> 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 I guess what I'm saying is it's kind of like when you see this river scene and we see the boat, it just like Barillon and sort of Shadow or Logoth, it'll kind of give you scale for the rest of the series, like how big Cain will be, how big, uh, like, uh, to, uh, not to Athwan, sorry, the Athenmir ships will be, you know, like that kind of thing. Like, it'll, like, based on the scale of his ship, it'll give you scale of, like, what a riverboat is like and what... I feel like a ship, though, is probably <clears throat> easier. I mean, like, like, you can... Like, they're, like, they make wooden ships still. Like, I mean, not they don't make them, but, like, there are a few, like... Yeah, sure. You can kind of like easily scale around, like you know, just so maybe that won't be that difficult. I think that the, the cities are, like you said, are going to really kind of give more of a 
concept of what they look like versus what they're going to just artificially induce. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, you don't really need much of the, of the ship other than just kind of your, you know, ingress, really, kicking yeah, someone in the head. Yeah, and then, like, well, he climbs up on the mast later. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's later, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a ship big enough to have a captain's quarters. That's pretty big. They obviously have a below deck. You know, like, it's a sizable ship. It is, yeah. I would guess about 80 feet long. Do you think uh, we're going to get Bale Doman? You're fucking right we are. I mean, he's he's not an integral character to in the least. And you could certainly just My guess replace would... his character throughout the series with someone else and wouldn't, you wouldn't blink an eye at it, story-wise. Yeah, but I mean, I guess my thought would be, why not call him Bale Doman to start? Yeah, why not, right? Yeah, and then just kind of have that as a base if you want to go continue calling him Bale Doman. Or, I mean, again, you've seen it in Game of Thrones and shit. It's like, just recast Bale of Doman because we can't find the guy. Uh, like they did with... Uh, oh, yeah, fair enough, yeah. yeah. With like, what's-his-name. Yeah, what's-his-dick. So the handsome. guy with the swords? Yeah, well, originally, and then he became a guy with one sword, I think. Um, yeah, they changed his character a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, why not? You know, what's the worst that happens? Well, I think the weird thing about... As weird as it sounds, if you're going to make a Bale Doman, I'd want him to stick around because... The whole point of him coming back later is that they recognize him. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's a different actor, it'd be a little weird if they were like, it's that guy from before. Don't you remember? <laughs> Audience? No? It's the same guy. You know, Bale. Fuck, what's Whatever, who cares? <laughs> Moving on. Um, also, the only other th- Chwacha thoughts I wrote is uh, them splitting up Chatter Logoth and all that Mastodar shit is going to be fucking awesome, and I can't wait to see that sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Slash maybe larger chunk of an episode. I don't know how long that'll be. I don't know, but I mean, I think that's one of the most kind of like visually it's gonna stimulating be awesome. things. That's all I'm gonna say. And again, I, I they've got a great archetype. They, how know, fucking cool Busters is it gonna be too. when that fucking Ghostbuster two sm- <laughs> smoke stabs a bunch of Trollocs and devours them? It's gonna be crazy. Yeah. And then at the end, like <laughs> hello, Winston. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah. And then you know that's the whole show. <laughs> Stirs the Ghostbusters too. <laughs> it's a the dark one is a painting hanging in the museum. Uh, Rand just <laughs> Rand just rides out of Shadow of Logoth, being like, "Your love is lifting me higher." higher. <laughs> <laughs> <I am. laughs> Keep kicking. <laughs> Anyway, your joke That is, is actually, by the way, with the Choden Cow are. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty and the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> the Statue of Liberty is just like... <laughs> they're, just, they're just sitting up on top of the head of the Choden Cow and just like, Your love is lifting me higher. Let's cleanse the taint! <laughs> and, and the taint, by the way... Is that red jello mold yeah, that's around jello mold. the museum? It's all around. It's yeah. it's all around Shatter Logos. Yeah. They ch- they channel it. Yeah. They channel it into a dome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hilariously, that's what it's probably gonna look like. So that's Twatcast for this week. If you have any comments or questions, the best way to find us is on Twitter at Twatcast. <laughs> Fuck. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> yeah, good. you can email us twatcast at gmail.com. We're on Patreon now, and that's patreon.com slash twatcast. If you enjoy the show, help us out and give us a dollar. And of course, thank you to all our current patrons. There's Each nothing new for this week, but uh, I've got some new art content on there. And if you haven't figured it out, I'm just putting all my old official Watt art on there. Twat art. Twat art. Yeah. At this point. But, you know, I'm just divvying it out slowly, because why not? But also, we have a new episode that I've edited fully and I haven't put on Patreon yet. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get around to it. Maybe tomorrow. You guys work hard for the money. Yeah. And by you guys, I mean us. (laughs) The Twadcast theme song is, of course, brought to you by the one, the only, the Taffy Bennington. Handle would be, of course, at SingWithTaffy on Twitter. And... Anarchy 101 on this new place called YouTube. I like that you say, of course. Of course. Because there's no of course there. I mean, the of course would be her handle being at Taffy Bennington. But that would be of course. Of course. 
But of course is not at Sing with Taffy. That's not an of course. Of course. Horse. Of. Join us next week for The Wheel of Time, book one, The Eye of the World, part seven, covering chapters 24 through 27. I'm Joe. You've been listening to Jono. Jono. And not Tom. Keep the change, you filthy animals. Fuck you, Tom. All right, everyone shut the f*** up.